G'day everybody, and welcome to more Space Engineers. But something I haven't done in a long while, <laughs> which, oddly enough, the the races made me really, really want to do. Like, that speedrunning kind of mindset made me want to come back and just play some Space Engineers. Just something mostly vanilla, something a bit chill, something a bit easy, because then... We can have more fun with doing stuff that we know could go terribly wrong because who cares if it gets destroyed, we can easily rebuild it. That sort of stuff. Um, so, the plan for today is I was going to get you guys in chat to um, kind of suggest, well, First of all, suggest stuff, but also if I'm up to a point where I'm like, all right, I've got a few different options here. I'm going to get you guys to choose which way I go. Sometimes it'll be, say, from the very beginning, which planet I should start on. Um, so I'm going to go new game. I'm not going to do any of these ones. I'm just going to do the usual star system start. Uh, and we'll start setting up mods while you guys think about which of the planet options I should drop on. Um, the ones I'm thinking are Pertum, Earth-like, Moon, or Triton. Uh, I think I think those four are different enough to stuff I've done in the past. Um, <laughs> uh, I could do Europa. All right, I'll put Europa in the options as well. I'll see how many poll options there are, but I'll do a proper poll in chat in a second. Uh, for now, let's do a few things, which is first off, turn off block limits. And we're going to enable spectator. We're going to enable the game scripts. And... That's kind of all I need to do. On that. Mods. What mods? The usual suspects. I'm going to... And when I say the usual suspects, I really do mean the usual ones. And... I really need to set up build info on this PC. So I'm still not using my main PC... Which? Oh, wait. That one. Oh. Charlie, this is not the time to want to go out. You can... I'll let you out in a minute. <laughs> um, let's, let's have assertive cargo ships just so that there's something there. And... Oh, dude, is air traffic still... Is that the one that Lucas has updated? Yes played with it in ages. Let's do it. Is there anything else I should add? Hmm. Hey, Tex. Um. I don't really want... Oh, I'm not sure I want to have the... Um, Lucas's ground base one because I'll probably get destroyed. The rival AI animals. <laughs> oh, yeah, Reavers. Yeah, Reavers. Reavers makes sense. There we go. Alright, that'll do. Uh, I swear there's going to be a common mod I use that I'm missing. Oh, of course. Oh, paint gun, paint gun, thank you. Thank you, I knew I was missing something. Paint gun. Uh, also, thanks so much Shrek21, Jarring Corgi, and Cryptic Gaming, who subbed when I was even offline. Uh, paint. DG's paint gun. 
probably my favourite ever mod. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that'll do. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Dreland. And... Now, set up pole. No, not daily needs, not daily needs. All right. Which start to take? We will go Pertum, Europa, Triton, and Moon. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to say space suit, but I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, do I want additional votes? Yeah. Let's let's chew up some people's points. Uh, two minutes? That's long enough. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> yes, Europa has no stone. You have to fly up to asteroids. This is true. Uh, true, any moon could be a bad start with Reavers, but Reavers could also attack me on a planet. So the other thing is, there's there's no survival less likely. This is all, like, I've been speedrunning space engineers. I can get the resources I need pretty dang quickly to hopefully be able to escape from, or at least run away from bad guys. So, or not completely get obliterated by them, I hope. So I think, um, I think it could play out interestingly in the combat sense, especially since now we got the big guns. And thanks Omni-5! Thanks, Trent. <laughs> thanks, Trendle Shadowmane. Um, yeah. It's looking like Pertum has the lead. But this could shift quickly. It's pretty close between Pertum and Europa, actually. I'm surprised how... I'm, I'm actually surprised Triton is more popular than the moon. Yeah, Triax, Reavers are not strong vastly stronger than anything else because Reavers the reason that I think Reavers is one of the best uh, NPC mods is because Reavers have a way of engaging with the player that's unique they don't just immediately know where you are they don't just immediately know what's going on you have to do stuff that lets them detect you and that's what makes engaging with them interesting and off to Pertum we go yeah, Moon is a bit grey and boring, so is Triton a bit white and boring. Um, but I've just never done a start there, so I was I figured I'd put it in the list. I've never actually done a Moon start either, properly. Uh, Pertum, we go. Respawn. Yeah, Reavers can be learned, so you can actually figure stuff out. Now, I probably... Whoa! Dragnon, you crazy man! How many was that? 25! Jeez. You're nuts. Thank you so much. <laughs> Jesus. What an entry. Uh, oh. What the... If I just lost my survival kit, that's bad. I didn't lose my survival kit! Um, I did lose nearly everything else. Uh, including my O2H2 gen, so I guess I'm without a jetpack for a while. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm taking this. I'm, I'm taking this as is. <laughs> this is, I, this is, this is different. 
I mean, I'm interested in a different. <laughs> this is possibly the most ridiculous start I've had. Uh. Also, is that icon new? I swear that didn't look like that. As long as I've got my survival kit and I've got my battery, this start is perfectly viable. And I do have both of those. So I'm, <laughs> I'm on board with this start. I'm a little bit concerned about how I'm going to get around in order to find the resources that I need. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is mine a whole bunch of stone and... Uh, no. Uh, did that one? Yeah, three out of my four Atmos survived. So I could fly this thing, actually. So I was just thinking about how I'm going to search out where the ore deposits are. And I did leave economy on, so let's create a GPS marker. No, we don't need that anymore. Hello? Why are you not letting me throw a data pad? Seriously? What the? I can throw the ice. Why can't I? Okay, that was weird. I'm going to keep that. That was real weird. Hey, thanks for the gift sub, Dead Beef. Um, yes, I have no tube for the gyro because I lost the thruster. I would have to use the large steel tube from one of my Atmo thrusters, which means I'd be left with two. And you can fly this pod, I think, on just one. Two is certainly doable. Uh, but on Pertum with the thinner atmosphere, I'm not certain that's true. Hmm. This this could be quite an interesting start. <laughs> Unintentionally. <laughs> uh, O2 shouldn't be an issue. Phantom has breathable. Am I getting injured if I open my helmet? No. Thanks, Big Yin. Yeah, it's got more grav. I might not be able to fly. I think I'm going to have to build this into a rover. Yes. Uh, storms may be an issue because I did not turn on the no lightning damage mod. Which I probably should have done. Oh well. Yeah, let's rover up the starting pod. For something different. <laughs> sure Capac isn't around things exploding this fast. Uh, uh no. Taylor Lion, I do not have a goal for this. This the goal is purely let's have some fun. Uh if I end up building something cool during the stream, I'll post it to the workshop. I'm currently playing on my sort of I guess for want of a better term, backup PC. Uh was intended to be my office PC when Capac and I thought we were going to have an office that we would use regularly. Because uh, my main PC currently has no current independent contractor Super Gremlin. Interesting. It's been so long since I've seen one of them. It's been many, many moons. Uh, so yeah, no no goal in mind, just gonna have some fun, and wanted to play something that was kind of vanilla-y, because I don't have all my regular saves and stuff, because they're all sitting on the NVMe drive, the M.2 drives that are stuck in my um, other PC that currently doesn't have a CPU cooler. Waiting for the replacement one to arrive. Hoping that the parts weren't destroyed by the previous one. Uh, so I figured I could start something like this on this PC. If I wanted to transfer it, I can later. If not, at least it'll be a bit of fun with trying to build some 
unusual, some unique things. Yeah. Yes, Tex. CPUs are overrated. Uh, the reason I had and will probably have again uh, a water cooler on my CPU is you can get greater cooling with the same amount of noise. And I like my PCs to be quiet uh, so that I can actually, you know, have nice audio when you guys are watching me. Because that's important to me. Um, so yeah, that, that's why I do that. Because the big air coolers, there are some quieter ones, but they're not as good in terms of how much cooling they can do for how much noise they put out. <laughs> yes, this pod does look like it's seen better days. Uh, I'm going to need to unlock pistons. I think. I might need to... I'm, I'm actually need to make a basic base here to turn this into a rover. Because uh, I did leave progression on, as you might have noticed. Just because I know how much it upsets people I wasted. I'm just like, meh, I leave it now. I can get through it quickly. I don't mind. Uh, what do I need for pistons? Pistons requires a battery. Yeah, I'm going to need a refinery. Alright. That's doable. Refinery and assembler. So, let's make a light, nice little basic base here. Let's change my hot bar to what I like it to be. And there we go, that. What are you chewing, Charlie? Better not be something of mine. Hmm. In your mouth. Now. Okay. You've got it. You weird dog. Why are you chewing on that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the the never work with um children or animals. I I think <laughs> I think a lot of people get a lot more irate. Uh, about um, progression that is necessarily warranted. It's not a good system, but it's not the end of the world. Come on. It's pretty quick to get through. It's like, it's a why is it even a thing sort of level of difficulty. It's really not difficult. It's a weird ramp, but it still works. Uh, Alright, this is where I'm going to need to use my jetpack. My somewhat limited jetpack. Because I don't think it's that grass that has the... Um, there's a tree over there. There might be some ice under that. Oh yeah, Tex, the grind the grind to unlock way of doing things was much better, but for grind to unlock to work, you need someone to curate the save for you so you progressively get stuff. Like Escape from Mars was very well curated. Um without that level of curation, it doesn't work. Grind to unlock just doesn't work. It breaks your game because you won't necessarily have the bits you need when you need them. Escape from Mars is the epitome of a well-scripted, 
discovery system, but in an open plan game, you can't do it. Um, progression is not a great game mechanic. I just don't find it as annoying as other people because I know how to quickly get through it. Um, so it just, it doesn't worry me in that sense. Like, I know a lot of people get really annoyed by it, and it's like, just just build the thing. It takes, like, 15, 20 seconds. Move on, people, move on! <laughs> yes, Escape from Mars is the best scenario ever made for space engineers. Hands down. No contest. It takes the mechanics of space engineers, adds story to them, and in a really interesting way. Like, um, I think for those of you that have played uh, Station Ears, the natural progression in complex games like that feels, I think, better for Space Engineers. Uh, there are some mods, Tincho, but it's still mostly vanilla. Uh, uh, refinery first or assembler first? Yeah, I'll go refinery. It's in my habit now. I, speaking of station is though, it's um, supposed to have a big patch coming soon-ish, which I'm looking forward to. And we'll drag Capac back into four. Yeah, Tex, I, I can understand why you wouldn't ever play station is solo. Um, in fact... Maybe I'll try and coax you into it when I get Capac back into it after the multiplayer update. Although I'm not sure how to... I've never played it in a situation where the other person has potentially bad lag. So I'm not sure how that goes. Um, but the like the whole big thing they're working on is stuff to make multiplayer work better. Yeah, I think I think knowing the style of um, games I've played with Tex and when I feel like he's had fun, I think Station Ears is much more a co-op game for him and for Capac. I don't see either of them ever really playing it solo. I played a fair bit of it solo. Um, and I enjoy it, but it is definitely, it's one of those games where because of the survival challenges that it poses, it's more fun in co-op. Because it's quite a difficult game. And when things are really difficult, it's nice to have your friends around to suffer with you. Misery loves company and all that. Uh, Altair, I've played some Stationeers since we last streamed it. Um, in fact, I've probably played... I've played a fair way through a save um, since we last streamed it. But I was just playing for my own fun and relearning the game. Because um, I kind of just wanted to. And I'll probably do the same again before we stream it again. Just because I feel like... If none of us know what's going on, it's the sort of game that would be frustrating for the other guys. Assuming it's both Capac and Tex, but if it's even if it's just Capac, it's it's the sort of thing that I I imagine they would get potentially very frustrated by. Um I think 
So the thing that Stationeers lacks that Space Engineers has in spades is the ability to build cool, unique stuff that looks interesting. Um, I can build something in Space Engineers that I can show off on the workshop, and in in a way, that showing off on the workshop is a form of multiplayer. It's a validation of what you've done when other people go, wow, that's awesome. Um, Station is doesn't have that to the same extent because it's systems design more than cool look design. And so that's why I think it's it for it. There's a bigger impact from having others with you at the time you're playing. Uh, yeah, and I just saw a tweet this morning from the Nitrox devs, who are the guys working on the Subnautica multiplayer mod, uh, that there is an update coming soon that may make actually playing the multiplayer easier from the looks of it, because there was a little code in it that said something about... Uh, that looked like local hosting or something. I can't remember what it actually said. But yeah, something like... You won't have to set up a dedicated server client on your PC first. But also, an update. And hopefully that means that it'll be running well enough that it'll be fun for us to play again. Because I am looking forward to playing through Subnautica in full with Capac. That one is so early stage though, I think... Um, I'll probably just play that one with Kappa because if it's really badly broken, it's uh, best to have as few people as you can have that that still be multiplayer. <laughs> How are we doing? Still need more stuff. That can probably get cancelled. Alright. Uh, got enough stuff. Just wait for the things to be manufactured. Yes. Tex, Skyrim... If Skyrim ever has a multiplayer mod that isn't just surrounded by controversy and or broken, uh, I so want to play that. Even if you don't actually play together all the time... Even if you kind of wander off from each other and then come back and just meet up for certain quests. I so want to do that. Uh, you're welcome, Cheese Radar Deluxe. Uh, Skyrim, no. No, it's not. Skyrim multiplayer would not be Elder Scrolls Online. Skyrim multiplayer would be a co-op experience, experience, not an MMO. And to me, those two things are incredibly different. Also, I just realized that making this a giant spiral is probably the worst thing I could do for the people watching. Uh, hmm. What is a tougher learning curve, Space Engineers or Kerbal Space Program? I would say... Uh, I'd say Space Engineers has the worse learning curve. Not necessarily tougher, but worse. Also, thanks, Chemsies. Um, the reason I would say that Space Engineers has a worse learning curve is because... You need to know stuff before you can enjoy stuff. Kerbal Space Program, you can know nothing and still have fun. Um, so Kerbal Space Program, you can build the most basic of rockets. It will fly, it will probably explode, and you will have fun. Um, but then there comes a point where you start having to learn about orbital orbital more de, 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 orbital mechanics you have to start learning about delta v calculations and actually doing mathematical stuff and that's 
by the point you've gotten to that in Kerbal Space Program, you've decided whether you enjoy the game or not. Space Engineers doesn't give you that. And so that's why I think um, tutorials in Space Engineers were something that I wanted to work on so much because I, I knew Space Engineers has a lot of potential for fun for people, but they needed to give people the ability to see that fun before they learned the game. And the tutorials in the game don't do that very well, in my opinion. Oh, why did I put that in there? No. Refinery. I have a refinery. No, the upside down pod was not deliberate. Uh, I'm... On the speedrun topic, uh, the deal Kanajashi and I have is that we are only allowed to run and do the speedruns. Keep doing that. Get more from the basic. Um, brain explosion. Brrrr. Oh man, what was I talking about? All right, speedruns. Ah, uh, yeah. So we have to. If we're in the lead, we can't run it. So it's now kind of Jashi's turn. It's basically we're taking turns. Until he beats me, I'm not allowed to go again. Because otherwise, you end up in a situation where one of you gets so far ahead, there's no point the other person even giving it a try. And that's boring for everybody, I think. I never use an automatic pickup mod because I don't see the need. Like, how much do you actually drill stone by hand in the vanilla game? <laughs> and it's really not that hard to hold down F while I drill. Um, yeah, I I get that story a bit, Rayleigh. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that my that I've helped people who've given up on the game before and then come back to it and been like, oh, oh, so that's why you do things that way. Oh, it makes so much more sense now. I can have fun. Um, it's kind of cool that I can that I've been given the opportunity to do that. Oh, right. What am I doing? But, uh... Brain explosion. I'm trying to do two things at once and my brain is not working it out. All right, one sec. Yeah, it's kind of nice that I've been able to help people. Oh, that's good, Textfire. I'm glad. I'm glad that um, Drago's helped you understand a bit of their aero mod. I'm not sure how relevant that's going to be for your cranes, but I'm sure <laughs> sure we'll find a way. Uh, Jens, Kanajashi will be doing his runs over on his YouTube channel, I think. Um, which is just youtube.com slash Kanajashi. Uh, it's linked in the... Oh, did I remember to link it? I think I remembered to link it. It's on the Discord in the link there, anyway. Uh, I think, I think at the, the way things are at the moment, it's unlikely for Keen to employ me to make a tutorial, but if they ever made a Space Engineers 2, I hope they'd at least consult me over how. 
Um, like, I feel like the speedrun thing and watching the other people have a crack at it, like watching Wasted have a go, watching Farrell have a go, uh, just reminded me how much I learnt about the vanilla game and how much I know of that stuff because of making the tutorials and because of the practice I did in order to make those tutorials good. Not being, like, just being a player of the game, not being a developer, I think sometimes helps with understanding what players are going to want to do and what they might struggle with. I put that in here, didn't I? Like an idiot. I did. Uh, Altair, I despise tiered blocks. Tiered stuff in survival games is just a terrible mechanic. It's not an interesting way to have gameplay. It's not an interesting way to extend a gameplay loop. It is just a way to say, these initial blocks you get, they're terrible. You're going to have to replace them. Um... And I think that's one of the things that slightly irks me about uh, Satisfactory. Everything you build at the start is bad. Everything. Um, the tiered hand tools I'm not as fussed by because it's not just... Because it's your hand tools. Um, but grid-based stuff that's tiered, I think is bad game design. Uh, for, for Space Engineers. I'm, I'm pleased that Keen has only really succumbed to that in terms of the basic refinery and assembler. Um, so yeah, I, and yeah, Je I, I don't think that a block, I don't think that there should be anything in our G menu that doesn't have its own unique merits. There should be a reason to use every single thing that's here. It should have an advantage and a disadvantage compared to any of its similar things. So... When we look at our survival kit assembler, basic assembler blocks, the survival kit has a role. It's small and it's a respawn point. That's how it's better than just an assembler or a basic assembler. On the other hand, the basic assembler serves almost zero purpose. The only thing that makes it slightly better than the proper assembler is it's a one by one block. I don't think that's enough but it technically is a difference. However, so if you're if you're talking like tiered like those tiered thruster mods where, you know, you have your first low tier thruster, then you replace it with your next one which is exactly the same size, it's just more efficient and just better. That's bad. If you're saying I want this block like a refinery and I'm going to have upgrade modules for it. Those upgrade modules take up more space require different materials, have different considerations to be put in place, so then there's a reason to choose the basic one without the upgrades, as well as there's a reason to choose the better one with the upgrades. And I think meaningful choice between the things is important. There needs to be meaningful choice. If there's no meaningful choice, geared stuff is just bad. Um, yeah, Minecraft is a great example of a game that is not tiered. You want... I, there needs to be meaningful choice between things. If there's no meaningful choice, then why have it there? It doesn't, it doesn't add to the game. All it does is extend a gameplay loop in a way that is very MMO-styled. In a bad way. It's a very much going the Skinner Box route. Yeah, it's, um, tiered stuff is complexity without depth. And, like, 
I, I'm not normally someone who says stuff like that uh, so strongly. I'm usually fairly careful about my wording of these things because I don't want to upset people, but tiered stuff, honestly, um, I get why some people like it. I don't. Uh, and I don't think it's good gameplay. Uh, one of the things, one of the reasons I always uh, really liked Total Annihilation as a role, as a real-time strategy game was that every unit had a role all the way through. You never replaced one thing with another. For the most part, I think there are a few exceptions, but they're just not coming to me. But for the most part, is that a footprint on this? How did I do that? <laughs> Uh, there's a ghost walking on the ceiling. Um, yeah, it had, it has so many different units, but every unit had a role. And there was an argument for using the most basic of units, excluding some construction units. But because they were cheaper, they had some validity too. Um, but yeah, that's... And that's my rant about tiered systems in games. <laughs> yeah, tiered system adds a sense of progression, but not real progression. That's why I call it a Skinner Box. It's that thing that gets you trapped in feeling like you're getting better stuff, but what you're really doing is just playing the same thing and negating your earlier efforts. Um, make meaningful choice. Add stuff that's better, sure. But make it better in some ways and worse in others. You can still make it so that like 90% of the time you're going to want to choose the better one, but those 10% of the, that 10% of the time that matters. Because that's what makes it meaningful. That moment of decision. Like, I think about think about the number of ro uh, role-playing games and stuff like that that advocate, like, that are trying to sell on the basis of meaningful decisions. Like, the choices you make impact the game. That's what is important. That's what you need to do. You need to make people feel like their choices matter. And if all you're doing is using something as a stopgap, that choice didn't matter. There was no choice. And I'm sure I am not saying this as eloquently and as well as I could if I sat down and thought about this and wrote it out. Um, which is annoying because I'm probably saying things that are going to upset people. But it's... I genuinely feel this way. Oh yeah, Total Annihilation has amazing music. Alrighty. We need another wind turbine. Ah, uh, have I splatsied yet? My pod did. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm blanking on the name of the composer for Space Engine uh for not Space Engines for Total Annihilation. I used to know it off the top of my head and I just can't think of it. Jeremy Soul, thank you. That would have bugged me. I will admit, two of my favourite games of all time have music that I can just kind of listen to. Uh, hang on. 
One sec. I just need to scroll back chat. I missed something. Uh... Eh, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. How much do these make on Bottom? Oh, pretty normal. Okay. Wind here is nominal. Uh, I do not terrapond. Uh, there's enough things for me to have to figure out at tax time as it is. I don't want any more portals of confusion. Um, how would I, how would I approach vanilla survival on Europa? I would allow my pod to gently land. I would do the start stuff that I did in the speed run where I used the landing gear and one of the Atmo thrusters in this case to build a gyroscope. Uh, use the interior plate in the seat and I would make a remote control and a gyro and I would fly to an asteroid to get stone. I'd stay up there with the getting stone until I had a cargo container and then I'd come down with a cargo container full of stone and resources and then go back to building on Europa where I would hopefully be able to get a basic refinery built up or I'd no I'd probably try and stay up in space until I had a basic refinery then I'd go back down to Europa to actually start my Europa survival Oh man, I really wish I could get the time and the energy to, hang on a second, I gotta let Charlie out, the time and the energy to learn from the depths. Uh, there is no stone on Europa in vanilla. I have tested this numerous times. I've even mined around deposits of ore and all you get is ore and ice. Unless that has changed since I last did it, but there is no stone on Europa. It is ice all the way to the core. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't have progression on, you could turn your pod... You could add a rotor to your pod, add a basic refinery to your pod, and use all of the plates on your pod to make the basic refinery on Europa, and then you could start refining iron and stuff using the battery power. Um, but I would personally go to space instead. Probably because I'd forgotten to, take, to turn... Um, progression off even if I'd intended to I'd still for I would have still forgotten because that's how I do things I always forget it Supreme Commander and Planetary Annihilation do something to scratch the Total Annihilation itch, but it's just not the same.
I think possibly for me, the nostalgia of Total Annihilation is always going to win out. For those of you talking about the uh, spiritual successes. But, uh, yeah, and now chat's talking about a whole bunch of uh, very large mod projects that will probably never go get off the ground. Uh, which reminded me that I'm really, <laughs> I'm really wanting my other PC back because that's where the multiplayer RimWorld save that Wasted Capac and I started is. And I want to try and organize a time for us to play some more of that <laughs> and lose another eight hours of my day. And then hopefully play some multiplayer um, city skylines with the two of them. So I think that'll be fun too. Hey. I I've never actually played the Homeworld games, Tex. I know I should have. Because uh, I was very much a real-time strategy nut as a when I was younger. But I have never played the Homeworld games. I own them on Steam. I have just never played them. And from everything I've heard, I should like them. But I, yeah, I've just never had the time to sit down and try and play them. Uh, it's... They've, they're in that perpetually... They're perpetually stuck in the I should do that one day category. Oh, Streeto, I don't send my <laughs> my PCs for repair. I'll send a component for repair, but I, I always... The assembly is always done by me. Um, I was actually thinking about this the other day. I have taught Capac something. I taught Capac how to build a PC. <laughs> I may not have taught him much in Space Engineers, but I have taught him that. Yeah, DemonWorks, I agree. Um, why The resource acquisition and everything else in Space Engineers should be your progression loop. You should not have progression tacked onto it. Stationeers has the same problem. They tried to introduce this research mechanic on top of their progression mechanic. And it just isn't needed. All it does is add an arbitrary gate when they already had some much more interesting gates to stop you getting the better stuff. Um, or the the higher efficiency stuff and so they should have just stuck with padding out with expanding that rather than spending effort on a research loop which doesn't actually add much in the way of gameplay though it does encourage you to make some stuff that you might not have otherwise done but it's still not great Yeah, Mr. Jux, that's kind of my argument. It, the Space Engineer's progression is not even noticeable, so... For me, I'm... Uh, it doesn't really fuss me when I leave it on, because I'm like, eh, I can just get around it so quickly it doesn't matter. Inventory full. I'm also not convinced that progression actually... helps new players. I think it makes it worse. Inventory well, I think... Full. I think... If you're going to do progression in Space Engineers, it should be... There should be survival kit, what it blocks that can be built from stuff from it, basic assembler, blocks that can be built from it, assembler, blocks that can be built from it. 
And that's kind of it. That'd work. That'd clean up the G menu in a way that makes it easy for new players to see what they need to find. That'd um, add some nice clarity to that side of things. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, do I wanna... Alright, uh, let's just do this while I mine it a little bit. Do, 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 do. Make the... Alright. How to rover. Make the pod rover. Make a... Fresh rover. Uh, no. So I'm thinking either I can make a brand new fresh rover that I can try and do something interesting with, or I can try and do something interesting with the pod as a rover. I'm not sure which I want to do. How I t triax, I don't understand how those two things relate at all. Um, I don't want tiered blocks. Tiered blocks are bad, so I don't understand how you've equated that to me being unhappy that blocks aren't better than hand stuff. Because I, I think blocks need to be better than hand stuff because there's engineering involved, there's decision making then. It's not, well, I have the best hand tools, that's the best thing in the game. Why would I want to engineer then? Like, that that's, I, I feel they're two very different things. Make a fresh rover. All right. Start thinking about a fresh rover. Uh, I haven't had a chance to build a welder slash grinder crane yet. Maybe that's something I can do in this. Build a little arm thing to... Well, maybe I could do that as a little drill rig. Um, using the new turret controller and make some sort of drill rig thing. Oh, that could be interesting. Yep. <laughs> 133 to 9. New rover it is. Yeah, Jax. If you spam ship grinders, they're okay, but they still fling things away so far that... To make them more efficient than just grinding stuff by hand with a top with an elite grinder is so much work that you probably would have been better off. Like the return on investment is almost never going to come because most people would have given up on that save before you got to that point. Uh, and I think that. The balance there is a bit wrong and could be done better. The balance should be more in favor of a single grinder on a complex, on a simple little arm that you can make with the new turret controller. I think that should be better than an elite grinder because it's a bit more awkward to use, but it, it should be better. And so then you've got this choice. Do I use the thing that's slightly awkward, but can grind faster? Or do I use the thing that's easier to use, but isn't quite as fast? And they're a meaningful choice. Yeah, I'm not sure if a hand grinders are too good or if ship grinders are too bad. I I don't I don't know how I feel on that one. 
Uh, I feel like, I guess, need to try out the two different ways of adjusting that. See which feels better. My impression is that ship grinders are not good enough. And tool shake should be reduced on ship grinders. Uh, the amount of force that they impart onto the thing that they're grinding should be dramatically reduced. Dragnon, you're a cheeky bugger. <laughs> no, I would not like tiered ship tools. I'd like upgrade modules on them. Because then you have to figure out clever ways of uh, laying them out so that you can actually fit the upgrade modules. That'd be interesting because then it's like this bulky thing that's awesome, but how do I make this work? Uh, yes, there is a way to turn... There's an option to turn off tool shake, but I think... So when I talk about this stuff, I'm aware that there are often options or mods or things like that, but I'm talking about what I would like to see the vanilla game changed to. Um, I think the amount of tool shake you have with drills is perfectly fine. I think it feels right, but the amount of force you get when grinding down a small grid using grid welder, uh, grid grinders... Um, and the amount of pieces that fly at such high velocity they phase through objects. That's too much tool shake. <laughs> and yeah. Agreed, Trax. I think ship grinders should just be better. They, they should be... They could use more power. Uh, they could use enough power that the power becomes meaningful, but they should be faster than a hand grinder. They should just, like, things should melt against them like butter on a hot plate. Uh, Cheese Radar Deluxe, I don't enjoy build and repair ever. I don't like the game with it. It doesn't suit the way I play the game. If I'm going to play a game where something like Build and Repair would be in it, I'm just going to play creative and I'm just going to design something pretty. Build and Repair does not add anything to the gameplay for me and, in fact, takes away from gameplay for me. I know a lot of people who really enjoy it. Um, I know Tex likes it. I don't. And that's a personal opinion. I don't think there's anything wrong with it as a mod. Energy. I just don't like it. It does not suit the way I like to play a survival construction game. Yeah, Trax, that's probably a good idea as well. Um, making ship grinders um, more of multiple grinding heads on the end so it's more of a blocky shaped tool so there's less nooks and crannies for things to fall into and get stuck like and on, on the build and repair thing every time someone asks me about that there's always people in in chat who are like yeah but I can make it fun by restricting myself in this way Yes. So doesn't that mean that the mod's kind of changing the game in a way that you don't want it to? And so therefore you can understand why I don't like it. It's kind of like the same things that I whinge about in um, vanilla. It's like, I'd like this to be more difficult. I'd like this to be more meaningful. Um, and when I go and play on my own, I will do things that aren't more efficient because I find them more fun. It is unfortunate Inventory that full. grid welders and grinders are so bad that something like build and repair feels necessary so that you can enjoy those parts of that game. Um, 
Because I feel like most people like it for repairing their ships when their ships get damaged. And if we had better ship welders, because again, ship welders are slower than your hand welder. And they should be faster. Ship welders, I think, could do with being about... About a third as quick as they are in creative mode. So it takes a wall of welders barely a second to build a single block. Because then you'd have reason to engineer a nice welding arm and repair facility in your hangar in your base. So when you go out and you fight something, you come back and you got damage, you turn your projector on, you repair it, and you go back out again. And you'd want to design around how the welders penetrate your ship and how far they can go and which bits might need to be repaired by hand, whether that's worth it. And then we probably wouldn't have this discussion about where people feel build and repair really excels, which is that repair phase. Um, and better welders would negate that need. I'm just collecting stone while I think and try and think of what I'm going to do with this little scout rover. Kind of tempted to go small wheels front, big wheels back, just for something silly. Yeah, AI enabled um, helper bots might be a really good middle ground on this stuff. I'm not sure they will be, but they might be. Because they have the potential to give us something that can help us build when we're playing solo, and something to make, but more importantly, something to make the world feel alive while doing that. Like, imagine having, like, the idea of having your own little bot going around and helping you, and you can actually see them, they're walking around in a suit. Um, that makes your world feel more, more alive, so it has an extra psychological bonus beyond what build and repair would. Uh, I think there's... I, I think there's a possibility you could see me playing with the AI-enabled bots as helper bots. Because I love trying to make my survival worlds feel more lived in. And I feel like having a little friendly bot doing stuff with me would make me feel that way. Uh, what do I need for wheels? I need to build a cockpit, don't I? Oh, just need to make a landing gear. Alright. And do. Thanks, Deathcat. Um, yeah, Altair, the AI enabled drop pods were in the first episode of Wrong Way Up. Yeah, what would I name my bots? I mean, if it's helpful, it's not going to be called Capac. You can be certain of that. Uh... Yeah, we'll go off-road. Left and right. So I think... Let's go... Five across the front. Actually, Tex, I would be very tempted to call my first bot Johnny Five. Man, I love that movie. I watched that so many times. Is this going to be too wide? 
Uh, nothing is too wide for my driving until it bottoms out. Is that about the same width? Yeah, cool. I did it right. Uh, actually, that's not long enough. Let's go here. Yeah. we go. <laughs> Thanks, Cold Dawn. Uh, yeah, Masker, nothing's, nothing big has changed since I did my earlier, since I did my most recent survival tutorials in Space Engineers. I mean, the addition of weather doesn't really change the game, aside from lightning, uh, so it's not too much. Yeah, I thought I'd go drag car style for this. Just because I don't often do it. <laughs> I thought I'd do something different. Where do I want batteries on this? Probably want to put one about here. Rover cockpit? buggy cockpit. kind of want to go buggy. Yeah, let's make it two-seater. I know no one ever is... No one, I know that's very little chance that anyone will ever sit in this with me, but I'm going to go buggy anyway. Go two-seater. It's not like this is the first time I've ever built stuff with the imagination that there would be other people with me. The entirety of survival, maybe. You hear storm and thunder? Also, how are the game sounds? Are they too loud? I think it might be a bit loud. And I completely forgot I had the music on. because I can't hear it myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's lightning. Oh, dear. Ow! Suffocating. Oh, dear. Uh... Can I build a decoy? No. What do I need to build a decoy? Turret. Delightful. And for that, I need to find cobalt. And I can't find the cobalt because I haven't... Fantastic! What did that just hit? My turbine. Delightful! Such a fun game mechanic this is. Uh, can I build an antenna? Need to build a beacon first. No, my wheel! <laughs> you just stole my wheel. Rude. Ow! Ugh. Yeah, it really does seem to love wheels.
Also, that one's spinning despite being broken. Interesting. Ow! Grr. The new Warfare 2 update turret block. I've seen people do hidden turrets. There's not there's not really much of a tutorial to hidden turrets. You just stick stuff on pistons and rotors and have it behind things. And then you use timer blocks to move them out. It's kind of the same as it always has been. It's not I don't feel like anything's changed there. Could be wrong though. Yeah, the underground lightning should, have, well, has reportedly been fixed. I don't know how accurate that is. I I did try and smite Kapak underground. One second. Um, okay, the light, the storm appears to be chilling out a bit now. Kind of wish I'd had this battery there. Oh, but yeah, I tried to zap Capac underground and we or oh, someone underground? D, you know, I don't know, we tried to do something with the smite command and it didn't, um, it didn't destroy us, so we figured it was all working as intended. I'll, I'll admit, I'm glad that Charlie has a proper deep bark, because it's not a yap or a yipping kind of noise. Um, it makes it a lot less irritating, but I don't want to be the neighbor that has the loud barking dog. So anytime she barks, she gets in trouble. And she does not bark very much at all. She's a very quiet dog for the most part. Um, <laughs> Charlie has other ways of getting our attention. She doesn't need to bark. She manages to, um, get my attention in other ways. Tapping on doors with her paws, that sort of thing. But barking randomly into the sky. <laughs> it's not something I want. Yes, the silent but deadlies, they they are certainly um are certainly a way to get my attention. Um glad I could help that. So crazy duckling. Yeah, the 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 corkscrew mining method is my preferred. But if Capax around, I'm often tempted to do the uh, Doom Pit style. But I've played so many times with a minimal jetpack or no jetpack that now this is my go-to. Yeah. 
yeah, I think lightning should be more... It should have had its own independent effect rather than just damaging stuff. Um, having some sort of temporary EM pulse would be kind of an interesting mechanic in some ways because it wouldn't... I always think about lightning from the perspective of a new player and it's a terrible thing for a new player because they don't understand what's going on and there aren't a lot of signals to show what's going on, especially if they're doing like I'm doing and they're underground mining and then they come up up to find that their base is somehow smoking and they're like, what happened? What did I do? I don't understand what I did and get frustrated and quit. And that's not good. And as I do try my best to help players not get frustrated and quit. I've been thinking about the, um... Because I've been thinking about making my tutorials again to since the other ones are two years old, even though, as I said earlier, not particularly out of date, but they are two years old. I've been thinking about remaking them. And one of the things that I am almost certainly going to recommend new players do is turn off weather. And that will be one of the, I think, one of the most important tips for me to add in the initial tutorial is turn off weather because of how bad it is for the new player experience. Uh, it's just like back in my very first tutorials, I recommended people put their environment safety on safe because meteors at the time would have perfect targeting on your refinery. Um, that was, <laughs> that was always interesting, uh, having meteors perfectly target you right onto your refinery, so that was always the thing that got destroyed. Oh, those, oh, I can only make the new drow. Ah. Probably got close to enough resources now. I'll just do one more load and then start making the rest of this thing. Yeah, weather as ambience would have been nice, like just background weather. Like looking into the distance and see seeing rolling clouds come through. Or I don't know, if they'd managed to if they'd made the planets in some way that you could add a cloud layer that was dynamic. That would have been cool. I don't think it's possible without a significant redo of how things work. If my understanding of how things work is correct. Thanks, Rodenwald. Tsunami appearing on the horizon. Hmm. For a tsunami, you'd need to have water. Uh, that's more than just a... That's more than a shader. A tsunami of ice voxels coming toward you. Energy low. Ooh, I just had a fun thought. I'm going to get you guys to pick the colour for this thing. I'm going to give you two, maybe three options. Uh, once I've made a bit more of a shape to it. <laughs> Would you make an in-depth tutorial on safe zones? Well, you see, there's been a problem with safe zones every time I've tried to do that. 
they are buggy as all get out. Like, insanely buggy. Also thanks, also thanks, Drakadar. Um, yeah. Safe zones. Super buggy. Super inconsistent. Super unreliable. I, I, every time I've messed with them, I've broken them within a matter of about five minutes of testing. Uh, I think it's, I think it's the world, I think it's, uh, the universe having fun with me because Capac and I were actually going to do a stream where we tested and messed with safe zones, uh, when we were, and this is when we were housemates. We, um, we started that stream and then I think our power got cut by a storm seven minutes in. <laughs> so, ever since then, anything I've tried to do with safe zones has just gone... Bah, bah. Nope. Not working. You're not having that. Not today, Splitzy. So, I guess I should have another look. But this is kind of why... This is a little bit why I think did redoing or restarting my tutorial series would be a good idea is um, I might have a different perspective on the new player progression path and I would like to do a series on like focusing on specific blocks like I did with the ladders when they first were introduced doing a bunch of tests doing a bunch of weird things with them that sort of stuff uh, would be interesting I think and I I think potentially allow me to continue those through to you know more advanced topics and also with me being a with me doing this stuff as my main job now I've got more time to invest into the tutorials so that hopefully I don't get that point to that point where I'm like well either I can spend a week and a half doing this tutorial, or I can work on two episodes of Survival Impossible in that time. And often, for me, stuff like Survival Impossible would win, because that's what I wanted to do. And yeah, things like my roller coaster. That sort of stuff. Yeah, stuff covering inertia tensor. Well, that that's something that I did. I think. No, I didn't actually really go into detail about how, how like what it does, in my rotors tutorial. Like how to make a garage door sort of tutorial. A tutorial on how to create a tutorial. <laughs> hmm. I feel like that's going to... A tutorial on how to create a tutorial is going and doing some sort of educational course on how to teach people. Uh, I did not finish my... I did start doing a master's uh, in education at one stage. I did not finish it. Because I... I stopped wanting to do the thing that I was doing it for. Like it was it was sort of a gateway to something else. It was something I wanted to do, but it wasn't something I wanted to do just for my own pleasure. Um, and when I didn't want to do the thing that it was helping me get, I gave up. Which isn't great. But I got through two years of it. And I learned a lot about teaching as a result. And I think that's... I hope that that's had some positive impact. Yeah, so tutorial on how to make tutorials is the sort of thing game companies should be paying for. I did have a dream a long, long time ago where I'd start making enough tutorials for different games that I could like work as a consultant to game devs on how to make their tutorials better 
and more approachable for new players. I uh, don't know whether that's ever going to be a thing I could do. Still sounds interesting though, as a concept. I think. But at this stage, there are only two games I've made tutorials. Oh, no, that's not true. Technically, I have made tutorials for four different games. I would only really count two of them as ones where I've seriously made the tutorials, though. Uh, being Stationeers and Space Engineers. <laughs> Thanks, Nuki World. Yeah, Mind Blower, I've actually... thats It's interesting that you say maybe a tutorial for new uh, new players about good, bad, multiplayer, co-op, single player, etc. Um, I actually came up with an idea for a video I'd like to record. Uh, it's vaguely along those lines, uh, which I'll hopefully do... In theory, I should be able to do even with this PC, not with my main PC. Although it'll be annoying having to make my thumbnails without my templates. Um, yeah, that is something that is close to a concept that I've got in mind. Which is interesting that you're so close to it. Oh my god, so much stone mining. I should have built a piston drill. I should build a piston drill. Should I? There we go. See how that one goes. <laughs> Hand means more chat. Piston means more stone. Okay. That's unanimous. Oh, no, not quite unanimous anymore. Yeah, I can't build storage, though. I mean, I could rotate some large, small grid, can some small grid large containers on, I guess, for a bit of storage. How to keep happy playing Space Engineers. Ooh. If I made a tutorial like that, I feel like Wasted would take it as a slight. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, um, Farrell would too. True, connectors are storage. That's a good point, Groz. And I could do the welder storage thing that I did on DI, on Draconis Impossible. For Escape from Purgatory. That is a good point. And yes, that is very good point, Gadget Girl. How to keep Pappy playing Space Engineers is very different for each individual. So I'm not sure... I... I mean, how do I keep happy playing Space Engineers? I've... I honestly don't even know. Like, the way I stay happy playing this is that I just... I don't let the little things get to me. Because I know that there are things in Space Engineers that nothing else can do, so I just don't let the little things get to me. I... Inventory full. I've often wondered 
whether the saltier creators among us are actually as salty as they say, or if it's just the... I don't want to say easiest because it's not it's not about ease, but it's it's the it's the comfortable way of talking about the things that frustrate you. Um, and I think for me as well, like as a content creator, this doing this so many thousand times better for me than what I would be doing if I wasn't able to do this. So anytime I'm feeling a bit unhappy, I just remind myself of how burnt out I am with my other work and how unhappy it makes me to have to go and do that and how lucky I am to have the opportunity to play games with one of my best friends, tell stories and entertain people as a thing that I do. And whenever I feel that way, I, I don't... I'm not saying it as a way to belittle any frustrations I'm feeling. I do it more as a... No, things are actually, on the whole, pretty damn amazing. And... So I don't really have much to get salty about. I'm also not... I was I was quite an angry teenager. Um, and didn't like who I was then. And made big efforts as a teenager to not be angry. And so... That's just kind of carried through to my life now on the whole. Yeah, Demon Works, I think some some people, some creators out there are salty for the sake of being salty and for... Because some people like when... like how you speak when you're being salty. Like, um, a frustrated Capac is actually, can actually be a very entertaining person to listen to. Um... I don't for a second believe Wasted is salty for the sake of it. I... I he's too genuine for that. Uh, but thinking of other people who make headlines in gaming journalists sort of spaces, yeah, there are definitely people like that. And I mean, there's the, there's the shock jock type people in every industry, aren't there? <laughs> I think I think between Capac and one of my brothers I have learnt how to not get genuinely angry because between the two of them they have over the past 20 plus years done a very good job of testing my patience <laughs> in a lot of different ways I'm curious if Charlie's snore just came through the microphone then. <laughs> Waste, it's not salty, he's British. This is true. Oh, Graz, and nostalgic wasted is just a pleasure to listen to. I, I do love when he waxes lyrical about the past things. I think that's I think that's the stuff that I always used to enjoy listening to of his when I um had the time to watch lots of his content before I started ever making my own. Yeah, he's a really good storyteller. And his voice just adds a gravitas to so much of what's said. <laughs> uh something that I lack. <laughs> I don't think anyone would ever say I have gravitas. <laughs> it has three modes. Salty, nostalgic, and muted. Oh, piston drill. Sorry. Forgot.
My bad. The pole was so strongly piston drill. Sorry, I was... I I was getting distracted. Uh, I've also done a dumb. Do I actually have room to build something in there? Or is that wheel too close to that output? <laughs> uh, <coughs> <coughs> this cough! It was gone! <laughs> Where's it come back from? That's really annoying. <coughs> this doesn't help um yes it does help what the f <laughs> you need to mine some silver so you can make some gravitas generator components <laughs> Ah, uh, I was feeling so much better when I got up this morning. Stupid cough. Go away. Uh, right. Do 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 do. Stop taking. Wait, girl. Hmm. I'm I'm very much looking forward to the survival stuff that Wasted has planned for us. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, that's going to be annoying, but whatever. I'm going to go there. Is a bird outside the door taunting you, Charlie? I think it might be. No, Charlie should not be taunting the bird back. Um, Charlie was a very naughty girl the other day. Uh, and actually managed to successfully hunt some wildlife in our backyard which I'm very unimpressed about very unhappy she did that she managed to catch a blue tongue lizard heard a big racket just outside um, my shed and came out to find her with a blue tongue in her mouth. Which was somewhat upsetting. And they are basic, they are completely non like they're not remotely threatening I also don't like the idea of her going after things like that because snakes uh, I really don't want her going after snakes yeah so that I wasn't impressed about. I figured she, like, she's obsessed with watching birds. She just, like, properly obsessed with watching birds. Uh, but she's way too slow, way too big, way too dopey to ever catch a bird. So I wasn't ever worried about them. Didn't consider her uh, fondness for lizards because she chases all the little skinks as well. But again, too slow to catch them.
Energy low. Now I'm gonna need some more stone for the piston. Yeah. Char Charlie is a... Well, she's not a lumbering oaf. She's more... Imagine a baby deer. Oh, I'm so gonna die. I should have built an enclosed cockpit. That was a mistake. Also, I'm gonna build a new tunnel down to stone because I'm gonna be going down there a little bit here. In order to get these pistons. And I'm... I don't want to have to walk all the way around again. Yeah, I really don't want my dog getting bitten and poisoned by a snake. I haven't seen any snakes around here. Oh, Splitsy did a dumb. He dug too deep, too quick. I'll do. Yeah, I, I think snakes where I am are pretty rare, at least the particularly nasty ones. Uh, but that's not exactly the case. Uh, where my some of my family live so I'd like her to not try and chase them out there as well if we ever get to visit well that's not going to work is it Yeah, the spiders are a bit of a concern. Um, did have the pest guy come around and then uh, might have found a dead funnel web in our grass. Charlie does have a thing for chasing the insects, so that could have been particularly bad. Thanks, Romanes. Uh, Alright. Gonna do that. Let's. So I need to go up, probably to there. And then I'll have to. Uh, let's go out a bit further. I'm building the worst ever drill here. What am I doing? Stop for a second, Splitsy. Think about what you're doing. Alright. Let's go with... That. And then a hinge on there. Don't think I have any steel plate though. Yes, I do. Let's go hinge. Just for something different. This is going to be a very... Um, this is going to be somewhat reminiscent of one of Capac's <laughs> thrill setups in his, in his little series that he tried to do. Uh, I might just slap the first drill straight on there. Oh, thanks so much for the 10 gift sub saucer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, now, I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna. I am gonna do it anyway. I'm building a big grid drill. Oh, actually, no. Because I'm using the hinge, this should actually be easier to quickly... 
upscale to that. Uh, that small head. Then we can put No. Uh, then we can put no to H2 gen on there. And then we put drill on the bottom bit. And then I'll swing that down, grab that stone, replace that with a proper drill, swing that down, and then we can piston, and then we've got a nice trench that'll go out this way. <laughs> Turret controller drill arm. Uh, yes. I want to do that, but I want to do that on a rover. Uh, this is just to get me the stuff I need for the rover. Nope, still stuff again. Thanks, Merita. Uh, the reason not to build the large grid drill is... There's your price... Hang on, let's just bring it up this way. There's your price for a small grid drill. There's your price for a large grid drill. Look at those steel plates. 20 versus 180. That's a lot of extra hand mining. So this will be a lot quicker to get up and running. And there's a small chance it'll provide me enough stuff to um, get, the next, get the drill actually built. I don't think it will, but there is a small chance. Yeah, you're, all, you're nearly always better off starting with small grid drills first because they are so much cheaper to make that you may as well just make them. I'm about to start suffocating, so I'm just going to open my helmet anyway and we'll just have to periodically heal ourselves. Or... no. I don't want to distract myself further from getting this drill arm. I want to get this built first, because then I can build a little cockpit and a vent and I can refill my oxygen that way. Ice does not work in the survival kit. You need an O2H2 gen to produce oxygen. Oh yeah, this is Pertum. suffocating. Now I will heal myself a bit. The uh, the H2 the O2H2 gen that I'm using here. Ooh, actually the way I've piped it, I should be able to pass the oxygen bottle that I I could make an oxygen bottle and I could put the ice, put some ice into there. Although it does look like I might have lost my ice somewhere. Ah, it's in the welder. So yeah, that should be able to pass into the O2H2 gen. I should be able to make an oxygen bottle and pop it in there. And refill. That's a good point. Nice. I actually did things in a way that helped me. Buggy cockpits are not piped. Because they're open air. Wouldn't make sense to pipe them.
Uh, my lander was badly damaged in the landing. Whoa. I just messed with my head for a second. Something went funky with the... thing. Uh, how are we looking? Do I actually need all those steel plate? Yes. Would you like to see a mod where random trees were able to damage slash kill Splitzy? No? I I find it amusing if, like, someone made a character mod that looked like a tree that was hostile. That would be kind of funny. Uh, but not just random trees exploding. I don't think you can, um, I don't think you can mod the trees to grow, though. Or at least, if it is doable, it's hard enough that a lot of people have given up on trying. Ah, uh, the drill is intentionally only going to get a very short distance. I just wanted to clear out enough that then I can stick a piston behind the drill, uh, and then it'll be able to reach further, and then I can probably upgrade to the better drill. Let's not go anywhere above zero, because we don't need to. Oh dear. No, the... Um, not sure... Not sure how I'd feel about the wrong way up bots looking like trees. Guess I'd be okay with it. I don't know. Not usually a huge fan of um, gag stuff like that. That's kind of a one-off. But I guess that's been a long-running enough one that it's probably okay. Uh, let's do it. Let's add those after. We'll get this first pass done. Lost track of chat. Sorry, one sec. Let's just get this stone. Ah, uh, the... No, the O2... <laughs> yes, the 5 of the O2H2 gen is this is where it fits, so this is where it's going. But it was actually put there as a very specific... Um, because it has a very specific function that other blocks don't have. Which is, it converts from large conveyor to small conveyor in line in the most compact method. 
So it's the most compact way for me to get from the large conveyor on the hinge to the small conveyor that the drill fitted on. It's effectively a flange style thing that goes from one to another. Uh, Demonworks, I imagine the different grid sizes in Space Engineers is all about allowing you to have big ships that don't completely destroy your performance. Um, because I think, as anyone who's played with small ships gone large knows, it is, it's not great for your game performance. Uh, it can be a pretty horrendous thing performance wise so if you like talking about why that O2H2 gen's there if you look at this block all around it has the large so to convert to small it has to come off the side and that would have been inconvenient So the O2H2 gen, which does it nicely in line, is actually the neatest block here. Uh, an oxygen tank does the same thing, but it does it in a larger platform. So. The oxygen tank is, act is another option, but it would take up more space. Is that going to be too far? Let's find out. No, that's alright. Pertum storms. Uh, I don't think I quite got enough iron for this. Oh, actually, no, I might have. I might have. Might have. Just. thinking add a drill on each side make this hole a bit bigger and then add another another small grid small piston and do the extension again and then maybe I'll have enough stuff to do a few more things maybe <laughs> yeah piston swings rather than Dizziness of me going in and out of a hole. Also, I'm about to run out of hydrogen. Uh, I have enough ice to fill it again, though. Doop, doop, doop. I don't have enough um, materials to make a useful turret controlled mining rig yet. See you now. Oh, I'm sure this contraption will get more complex in time. This is just. Uh, I. I'd like to get some resources so that I can build the complex thing without having to mine everything by hand.
that would be nice. And extend. And I should have put the second drill on the other side. What the? What is with my footprints being in random spots on this world? Yeah, definitely another Pistons is coming. Yes, I am leaving my mark. Oh, I really didn't get much from that little addition. Uh, in that case, let's try this. It is Thursday, so Capac will probably be streaming in about 11 hours. As he'll be heading to work shortly. Yeah, Kabak streams on Thursday evenings. Uh, he hinted that there's a new game he's playing. So I'm guessing it's something he was um, given a key for. Given he was being cagey about it. Uh... My only consistent toolbar in Space Engineers is the one you can see in front of me. That first toolbar is typically those armor blocks, because I don't use these with any frequency, so I never really need them. It used to be, instead of these two blocks, I would have the interior wall block and catwalks. But now I usually put catwalks and interior wall blocks on these ones. But I haven't unlocked them here yet, so I haven't put them in, the, in yet. I'm not sure... I'm, I genuinely don't know what it is with Capac. It's Capac. It could be any game. It could be some random, like, indie release that is truly bizarre. It could be anything. I have no idea. All I know is that he was being a bit cagey about it at the end of Wrong Way Up when I asked him what he was planning. lose these two. Let's add another piston. Or two. Since it does seem I was a little um, unrealistic hoping that I'd get a, a large grid drill on here in any reasonable time frame, so we're going to stick with smalls. I just order up. Eh, it all looks fine. Yeah, 
And then we'll go with that. That. And we'll see. If there's leftover materials, whether I can build a third drill or not. Uh, yes, Capac and I are doing another series together with just the two of us. Energy it's something I've wanted to do in a do for a while. Um, it's a very different game, and it's a very different feel for us when we play just together, uh, especially as a recorded series. Uh, so yes, we are starting a new one. I'm not sure when it's going to go live, but our aim is to actually start recording properly for it uh, this Friday. But yeah, not sure when when it'll be a thing because I want to record plenty of it before I start um, releasing any of it. But it, the the first of the series I have planned with Capac this year uh, is something very different. So something very different to anything I've done before in Space Engineers. So I'm hoping it works as I imagine it could. Now, uh, let's get some share inertia tensor on those. Uh, Dracodar, I don't really have anything set up to do that sort of stuff, to be honest. Energy critical. Um... Yeah. It's just not... It's hard to make stuff like that work well. Um... Capac and I have only played Deep Rock with DE and Nab on their channel. I didn't think we'd ever played it with anyone else or anyone on stream or anything. We played a little bit of it when it first came out, just the two of us, just to see what it was like. Um, I don't think we've ever played Deep Rock else, other than that. Or did I play it with... Did I play it with Shaq, Wasted, and Tex, maybe, for one of Wasted's... No! I think it was possibly going to be part of one of Wasted's charity streams, but um, I joined in after Deep Rock, I think. Maybe? I can't even remember. God, I'm starting to sound like Capac. Can't remember things. Now we're getting some yield. This is better. Let's reverse that. And we're going to add that third drill. <laughs> yeah. Ask Moldark. He'll remember if I've played with Wasted in it. Uh, so, we need... Need that. And we need... Uh, yes, more RimWorld will be coming, but more RimWorld needs my PC to be fixed because our save is on one of the M.2 drives that's in it, and I have nowhere else to put that drive so that I can make you so that I can get the data off it. 
uh, until I get a new CPU cooler. <laughs> yeah, Dragnon, you make a good point. My battery is almost full because it's taken me so long to get this drill done. And that's what I was looking forward to. I was genuinely looking forward to just taking my time, not rushing anything, just chatting. Just building unnecessary stuff. I have no idea what I'm going to do with the new weapons in Survival Impossible. I don't know in what way they're going to be useful, detrimental, terrifying, all of the above. I genuinely don't know. Whoa! Thanks, kind of said ninja for the 10 gift subs. Ah, thank you so much. Uh, no, Andrew, I do not have a goal. I'm just building. I'm just having a bit of a fun play around for something different. Uh, I hope I build something cool. That's my goal. I hope I build something cool that's worth publishing to the workshop. Cool, unique, weird, something like that. Uh, that, that's all the goal. Nothing more than that. Yeah. I'm hoping this will be a nice relaxing day. Of building weird stuff. Uh, I have no idea, Imperial War, whether my script to progressively increase the antenna range still works. Because antennas have been played with since I wrote that script. Um, it's not a script that's required for making NPCs interesting anymore. So it's something that I have no plans on updating or fixing if it is broken. You're much better off using the modular encounters <coughs> systems and getting better stuff out of that. Okay, let's slow you down a bit. I think it's going a bit too fast for the size of the arc that it's on now. Potentially too fast for the refinery. Yes, let's slow you down even more. So, uh, will this go in the welder? Yes! Hooray! Oh, finally got to that point where this drill actually makes it faster than doing it by hand. Uh, it's not MES that's easy or not enough threat. It's the mods you're using that use MES. MES is a system. It's not a mod that adds NPCs. It adds the ability for other modders to add NPC behavior. Um, so you just need to pick more difficult mods. Um, if you're finding that the interactions are too easy. Or... Um, there are commands to increase your threat score so that you get nastier stuff earlier, if you want. Yeah, I'm thinking, Triax, that the magnesium mine in Survival Impossible is going to become heavily used uh, as soon as I can return to it. Which was meant to be yesterday, but with my PC being out of action, I am still unable to. Um, so, 
when I hopefully will be getting back to it next week, I guess. Um, I might be able to... I'm going to be wanting a lot of magnesium for the ammunition for making many, many assault cannons. Yes. Add Reavers, Orcs, and then the Zebra Monkeys Mercs mod that uh, TFA made. Because that thing's got, like, they take advantage of shields, they do all sorts of mean stuff, um, and they're really aggressive. But yeah, it really does depend what mods you choose to add with MES as to how difficult it is. I personally like a game where the NPCs give me a goal. Um, and again, once I can get back on my PC and I can start doing my ACS stuff again, that's my plan with ACS. Uh, the first thing I want to do before I start upgrading any of the grids is understand what I need to do in order to utilize the mod that Grozov made for me um, that allows me to make specialized thrusters that are only able to be captured from NPCs. You cannot build them yourself. You cannot like build them from scratch. You have to capture them. And that's what I'm looking forward to adding in properly. Um, so that's, and I'm glad Gruz is in chat, because that's my plan, Gruz. I'd like to work out how we need to add that in properly. That's the first thing to do for ACS, and then I'll go back and rework all the designs with the new guns, with the new mechanics, with the new ideas, and with those thrusters in mind so that every grid is updated properly. And so that the mod then gives you a purpose, gives you a reason to go after those enemies. Um... That shouldn't be an Ogruz. You had it working, didn't you? I think. Um, but that's that's my goal with that. Because I think it'll make it much, much better. Oh dear. I just wasted a whole bunch of stone. On that pass. Now, oh, well, I've got a decent amount of iron now. Cool. Let's finish off the rover then. Uh, yes, uh, it's one of the air traffic mod is in here, as is assertive cargo ships, uh, as is as our reavers. Oh, yeah, absolutely wasted. Also, how's it going, mate? Um, Corrupt is one of the scariest mods because it uses the cheaty old AI behavior. I'm really looking forward to what Lucas does with Corrupt when he updates it. And Corruption... Yeah, Corruption's brutal. Uh, the... Using the new turret controller as a gimbaled thruster thing is not really a great use for it, I don't think. Uh, trigger happy Aussie, go to my YouTube channel, search for build, or just go to Google and search for Space Engineers Build Planner Tutorial, and you will have all of the information you need to learn about Build Planner. Because I did a tutorial on it that goes into all of it. Uh, and I think Rayleigh Jones just dropped the link to it in chat. That is, <laughs> honestly, so much better than me trying to explain it live. Thanks, Rayleigh, for dropping that. Uh, I kind of want to put a rotor mounted on this, so I'm gonna. Because it can be replaced by something else later. Why two seats? Symmetry. No other reason.
had no other reason than symmetry to want to do this. Oops, that's not the way I wanted to rotate that. Plus, I like having a little library of um, stuff that's useful potentially for, you know, multiplayer stuff that I can just drop in. And I feel like I've got, I haven't got much of that, those sorts of grids at the moment. I'd like to have more of them. Oh, I should weld these up before I do that. Lizzie, I think that's a good attitude to go into new builds with. Uh, slap stuff together, hope it works, and if it doesn't, have fun engineering ways to make it work, rather than making pristine stuff all the time. There's a lot of fun to be had out of making stuff that just barely works. Yes, Wasted, there is that issue of Bill Planner lying sometimes, saying you've got everything when you don't. Uh, but at least if you know, like, the way to use stuff, or the way it should work, you can know when it's broken. I guess. Energy low. This is not a server, this is just me playing for fun. Now, oh, what do I need... Capac, be at work. Hm. Why didn't that highlight on the thing? I'm enamored with this way of um, getting stuff to lock down now. It works quite well when you can be relatively level. So, to get stuff to lock to this rotor, I build a timer that's set to attach, 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 attach as frequently as it can. Uh, timer block, setup actions, advanced rotor, attach, timer block, trigger now. Start. Oops, trigger now. And then... I have steel plate. We should just be able to do this. Yep, locked. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to put a detector on there. <laughs> uh, wait. Nope, I accidentally did offline mode. Engineering reasons why I don't need friends anymore. Ouch. <laughs> well, I figure with this, what I can do is uh, once 
once I've gone and collected the materials we need for making some more fancy stuff, I can take this detector off and I can turn that into a rotor cannon with the new controller block. Yes, Dex, you had one job. I don't have enough nickel. Yes, I do. Yeah, I haven't... I, I'm interested by the radio spectroscopy mod. I'm not sure how to integrate it into play yet. Um, in an interesting way, but I'm I'm interested in the concept. Uh, other thing I need, of course, is an antenna, which means I need to build a beacon. <laughs> Ouch, Drago. Splitzy would have to actually play in space once. Well, you know. Engineering's more interesting when you've got gravity to deal with. Saying that to the guy that's um, made the aerodynamics mod, you should, I assume, agree with that concept. Uh, yeah, radio spectroscopy could be interesting on the drone-only run. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm just gonna roll with the punches on that one. Which will be a nice change for me. Lightning's been an issue since they introduced it. <laughs> it's like... Let's do this on this side. Um, oh yeah, thanks for the reminder about the gyro. It's building in space. I don't know. I I guess I did so much building in space before planets became a thing. Um, that I did a lot of what I wanted to do with that before I even started making videos. I don't know what's happening to my voice, but <laughs> um so yeah i i don't know i don't know about that one da do not know i've wanted to do some more stuff in space for a while i just can't think of what Oops, too close.
Ah, to stay away. So one one space start that I do want to mess around with some point, maybe soon, maybe not. Depends on other stuff I want to focus on instead. Um, I do want to try a spacesuit start at some stage. Just out of morbid curiosity. Oh. Whoops. I never actually recorded that GPS of where that station was. My bad. do down the middle here before I add the gyros in hey spectre spectrum uh to get production started with a spacesuit you need to collect stuff from unknown signals and or pirate stuff uh, to get a quick start going you'd need to pirate stuff but to get a start going you can do it with just signals Uh, no, I'm not having trouble with what series to do next. I've already got that sorted. Um, and I've also got sorted what I'm doing with, like, when I'm going to come back to Survival Impossible and things like that, which is just dependent on me getting a CPU cooler that's actually delivered in a reasonable time frame. Um, because the, pers the company that I ordered from at first is... After three days, still processing my order. And no, I'm not bitter about that at all. Not angry about that one, one bit. Nope. 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 And it's it's not even it's not even the postage service. It's not Australia Post. They haven't even given it to Australia Post yet. That's what makes it annoying. But yeah, if I ever do the um, spacesuit start, I will definitely do that as a stream because I'm Energy probably gonna low. get advent like get benefits out of you guys suggesting stuff. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with the front here, but uh, we can put those spotlights up there. Yeah, that's true, Tex. I should schedule my unplanned emergencies better.
Ow. Yeah, I guess with the economy stations, a suit start is a little bit easier because if you find an economy station, you can use that as your base of operations to keep yourself with oxygen and with power. Um, the old start with it used would have been really, really hard. Also, I'm out of iron. That is a weird looking face, but it is most definitely a face. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I made a nose, two eyes, and a light mouth. Yes, it's a very shiny, toothy grin. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I don't know what's with me and faces. All right, let's pick some colors. So the colors that I... Uh, let's just do some random. Let's go with... I haven't done anything bright green in a while. So we have that lime green as one option. Then well, we could go teal orange. That could be a... Interesting color combo. So if we go teal against orange. So that sort of thing. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. You get the idea. Um, and then the third color option. Let's go with a deep purple. We'll go like an electric purple. Maybe deeper. No! Ah! Oh, splits, you idiot! Why did you hit defaults? Not okay. Ah! I hate it when I do that. So much. <sighs> so we have our lime green. It's the orange. The teal. And then we go our purple. Alright. So... Which primary color? Why did I capitalize that? We have lime green. Teal. And electric purple. I'll, I'll mess with decals myself, but I'm just kind of interested in which one you want me to try and get the color with. <laughs> Disco purple. Um, cause I may use, like if I used, if I did the teal, I'd probably use an orange counter to it with the electric purple. It might be a black or a charcoal gray, um, or it could even go against white. Actually go, doing it against white could be kind of cool. Um, so we could see which one. They're quite close between the teal and the purple. Copper Retro Future. Maybe for the drills we could do that. Hello. Yes, Charlie. You're being a monster. That's why you're not allowed outside. Ooh, Electric Purple's taking the lead again. Glitter brown. No would ever no one would ever attempt that. <laughs> ah, so when I say primary colour, as in which is the dominant colour on the rover?
<laughs> See you, kind of said ninja. Oh, here we go. It's coming down to the wire. Those two are very close. Oh, and Teal has it by five votes. All right. Teal it is. Okay, seriously, dog. All right, you can go out. You're being a rat. <laughs> go. Uh. Codon contributed 11,000 channel points. Now, I don't know if that's Codon contributed them to Teal or to a different one, because it does vary. I don't know whether that's true, whether it works that way. Oh yeah, it's definitely a pay-to-win color scheme, but it's channel points. Come on. Oh, no, that's not where I want that to go. Oh, I just had an idea. Do do do. I love that we can do things like this now. Also, I love that we can weld those things up now. Yeah. <laughs> Just for something a little bit different. This is the sort of different that you hope grows on you, but you're never really sure if it will. this and in 10 minutes upside down because gyros. I know, I know, I, st I know I haven't done the gyros yet. Fuel low. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous looking thing I've built in a long Fuel time. Critical. Oh man. Uh, what, what is going on inside my head today? I'm just going to take this to the weirdest ever place now. Because I can't see what any other options. I mean, I built it with big wheels at the back. Like, this was never going to end up being a normal vehicle. Also, it's hideous. I will attempt to make this look good eventually. Uh... Yes. 
<laughs> oh, man. That's just perfect. Only four wheels. Wasted would be ashamed. Correct. <sighs> I don't even know what Wasted was saying correct to or whether it was that, but it just the timing. Thanks, Avenger Key. I still don't have any iron, do I? Uh, nuts. Eh, the drills are not wasting any meaningful amount of power. Because I I have more power than I can use, and so, meh, it's fine. He's fine. Thanks, <laughs> Sleepy Pew. Uh, hmm. need to expand the drill, but I want to kind of just build those gyros because then I can go and find some iron and come back with that instead. So, I will be back in just a moment. I need to take a quick fire break. Be back in a second. Okie Why did I miss? <laughs> Why not make the fifth wheel a large grid one attached to the ore detector as a bumper in case of flipping? You say that like I haven't done things like that before. One of the vehicles that I sort of might have kind of crashed on... Purgatory and Escape from Purgatory might have sort of had some wheels on top to prevent me from damaging it when I rolled it. Because, uh, as Wasted knows full well, it's really easy to destroy your vehicles by flipping them when you have bad lag. Even worse when you have inconsistent uh, physics sim speed. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been there. I've done that. It kind of ended up looking like it had antlers. I still managed to destroy the vehicle, though. <laughs> yeah. Wasted, I'm always going to be envious of how awesome and well the spider worked. I just want a cool build. We don't talk about the OG booze bus. We don't talk about that. That never happened. Don't know what you're talking about. Oh man. I just realized. <laughs> oh. 
Ah, if, um... If Drago had his mod where you could watch videos on screens back at the start of Wrong Way Up, showing the initial crash, like the crash of the initial booze bus on a screen in-game while I introduced people to what the series was going to be would have been perfect. <laughs> I didn't even think about it, Drago, to be honest. <laughs> I just thought about it then and I would have went, ah, oh, yeah, that would have been a great use of that mod. Would it have been, <laughs> have been an amazing way to do it. Ah, uh, yes, you did, Drago, but... That was... We were already a fair way into Wrong Way Up by then, weren't we? Like a month or so? Or a couple of months? When you let me know about it? Oh, I'm sure wasted you before I did. I don't take any offence. <laughs> why, oh why, didn't you build the computers? Yeah, we have a gyro. We have two gyros. Uh, the booze bus wasted. Um, as in, because Capac decided to call it the booze bus to confuse people because the booze bus in Australia is not a party bus. It's a thing that the police operate to run random breath testing roadside things. Because Capac. Uh, Leafy Pew, I don't do sound alerts. I don't like them. But thank you. Uh, I think I'm good to go destroy my rover. Uh, it can get a spoiler once the detector's gone. Can you imagine aerodynamics on this thing? Uh, I probably... Eh. I was going to say I probably want... Um, to have... Oh, brain. Cargo. But it'll be fine. Or detector at maximum. And let's turn off steering on those rear wheels. Let's put the power up. Let's put the power down. Just to see what effect this has, because I'm curious. And because this is mostly vanilla, let's have some fun. All right, uh, time to drive. It actually doesn't feel too bad at the start. <laughs> this isn't too horrible. Oh, silicon. Got anything else in this deposit, or is that it? Looks like it could be all we're going to see. Oh, yeah. I think that might just be silicon. Oh, cobalt. Found cobalt. Yeah.
We have a winner. We have some air. Oh, treat. My first tree. Uh, I'm hoping to find... I can't remember. I think it's supposed to look like normal, like, healthy green. The spots where you can find ice on, um... Pertum. So I'm hoping I can spot an oasis somewhere. I've got cobalt. Should I? Here we go. Uh, let's do this. Keep sir. Uh, how more iron? Search for deposit. Make big. Piston rig. Go for it. Oh, it's a bit even. I'm Englanding good and proper. That is very tight. We'll come back to that in a sec. I'm still going to search around because I need to search around for some for an oasis, but just whether I go back, grab that cobalt and use that to build up some better equipment. There's just cobalt everywhere. Should probably mark it just so I don't come back to those spots though. Ooh, it's still real close. Probably shouldn't have alt tabbed while I was midair. More silicon. I wouldn't mind finding some magnesium, to be honest. That would be really nice. Oh, we found iron. Still, it'll be whether I come back and mine this. The question being asked is whether I'll mine this or whether I'll just keep going with the massive piston rig. Give me some magnesium. Massive movable piston rig. Ooh. Ooh, that is an alternative option. So search for deposit did just win, but I think we might... Now that we've found a deposit, I'll grab some... Hang on, we'll, we'll do the next part in a minute. I'll grab some iron, because the whole one, so that I can then... put that toward building a mobile piston mining rig that's controlled with a turret controller. Because why not? See if I can come up with a way to make the turret controller actually useful in the setup. Because I'd really like to make it useful in cranes. There are ways to make it useful. Whoa! Whoa. Ah, come on, give me some magnesium! It must be quite rare. Whee. 
Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> More little cobalt. Don't care. Oh, nickel. Haven't marked nickel. Oh, this is actually a um, a multi-deposit. There are some big deposits. Cool. That's good to know. This is how little I've played on Pertum. That ridiculous maneuver I did before is why I have uh, I have um two gyros on here. Slash GPS is vanilla. It is a vanilla command, and it is very useful <laughs> for saving yourself time, especially if you're making multiple marks. Cobalt. Is there a... Is there something funky with the Burton ore distribution, like with the ice, where I should be looking for um, a particular place to try and find magnesium? I haven't seen any yet. Okay, it's just rare. That's silicon. This would be a lot easier during daylight. Maybe I should head back to base and grab some iron on the way. And start expanding the drill rig a bit at base. Kind of do both. Ooh. No, cobalt. Alright, where's one of those iron deposits? This way. Actually, I'm going to head back to the. Whoa! Whoa! Respawn pod this way. Let's see if I come across anything else. And then head out to the iron. Yeah, it always feels like that. You can't find any anything and then you run into thousands of them. Nickel. That's a deposit. What's that got in it? Silicon. Alright, I'm on top of iron. Let's grab some while I'm here. Is it too early to be making a detector slash camera drone? I never make a detector slash camera drone. I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. I pretty much always search in person. I mean, you have to if you're in space, because the asteroids don't load if you're not in not there in person. Um, which I kind of cheated my way around in Survival Impossible by sending Steve up as a character to spawn the asteroids. Annoying limitation. Flip, flip the ore detector around and stick a large spotlight up there. Uh, interesting idea. Interesting. 
I don't know where the center of mass of that block is, whether there's actually any mass that goes out to the front bit. Because if there isn't, then that would probably be a fairly good idea. If there is, it could be problematic in terms of making me flip. <laughs> yes, Eisenst. I know. Stop breaking my immersion. To be fair, though, I'm pretty sure I even said that during Inventory. SI that I did that. I am stuck behind the boulder. That's a fair point. My driving is probably a bigger factor in whether I'm going to flip or not. I can't deny that. That's fair. What the... Arr. I am driving around at somewhat high speeds. Uh, yeah, the show center of mass thing should. I suppose if it's anywhere forward then perfectly above the rotor, then there's some mass coming from the um, front of it. Inventory full. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, there's definitely mass to it. Look at where that marker is. Yeah, the original jalopy needed to be driven quite slowly. That's why I was so horrified when Capac started speeding down the hill. It was not intended to drive at those speeds. Inventory full. Inventory full. Okay. Time to go. Uh oh, don't fall in the hole. Oh, but yes. Where we're going, we really, really need roads. Yeah, Groz, I did design the jalopy badly, deliberately. Completely, deliberately bad design. You have to give, like, yourself some something to improve when you're starting out. You don't want you start a vehicle to be perfect, because then, what's the point of playing? Yep, I knowingly gave Capac a flawed vehicle. I wouldn't give him my perfect one, he'd still crash it. Uh, oops. Didn't mean to do that. So, the way I see it right now, I have a couple of choices on my next things. Most of the ores seemed to be around 30 to 40 meters down. Um, so 
in order to build a piston rig that's going to reach them, I'm going to have to go large grid for that. So I could go and build a large grid rover now with the aim to place the turret controller thing on it. Um, or I can keep building on a static grid. And expand this drill rig out a bit more to get some more stone. Um, go grab some cobalt by hand, that sort of thing. So. Which big, big base, big truck. So. Whether I'm going to, like, which am I beelining towards? Which am I going to try and focus my efforts on? I may still need to do a little bit of expanding on the base itself, but uh, it very much seems people want a big truck. I might even go a big truck that's so big. If I do the big truck, I think I may even do it in a dumb way. A way that would make people uh, annoyed with me using blocks that I shouldn't use because I want to use them anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like the big orange, like the Ubor was. Like the unnamed big orange rover. So step one for building something that big is getting a whole lot of resources. So I'm going to expand this drill rig a bit. I'm going to go grab some cobalt so that we've got a storage facility. In fact, I may want to do that first. Uh, I don't want to do a small grid drill system because... The building that many pistons is just annoying. It's not hard, it's just annoying. I'd much rather go with large grid. Large pistons on a small grid truck. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. The the weight balance of that is so bad. Um, hmm. Let's go get some cobalt. That is the wrong seat. No! Ah, oh, you rude vehicle. There we go. Let's go to the nickel cobalt silicon. We'll grab a little bit of nickel, a little bit of cobalt. And then we should have all the materials needed to make stuff. I need to stop using my jetpack though. My jetpack, using my jetpack the way I have been is a problem. Because I'm going to run out of ice and I don't know where any is. And I should probably be avoiding running out of jetpack fuel before I finish this rover. Gruz is just getting back at me for suggesting that we need to... Suggesting that I'm going to use his mod soon when I've been so bad at actually getting getting his mod into ACS. I've been terrible. And I'm very sad about it. Which sounded really sarcastic as I said it then, but it genuinely wasn't. I'm actually really sad that I haven't gotten that in because it, it will give ACS such a cool purpose and give you an act actual reason to engage with potentially initially passive uh, NPCs. 
Uh, Gruz, you handed that over to me about a year ago now. I think. I think it'd be close to a year. Um, but you, you handed me the version with the blocks, and then you had the grid component one was still in progress when we last talked about it. And I can't even check which one I have because I it's on the other SSD. Inventory full. Ah, uh, okay, Gross. I, I see. You upgraded the one you had over. Perfect. Then I have no excuses. Uh, the Doctor, I don't think I'm likely to return to that seven days to die Ravenhurst save that I've been going on. Um, largely because I kind of I kind of got to a point where it didn't feel like it had any real excitement to it. I'm not sure that that opinion could change, but I kind of, yeah. I think I'd like to get Capac to play Ravenhurst with me at some point so that we can design a cool house and have a bit more going on in it. Um, there are some other single player things I'd like to do as chill streams that take the place of those Ravenhurst streams. Stuff like this, stuff like Lego, that sort of thing. Um, because I ordered some stuff to go along, like, when I was ordering the CPU coolers, um, I was like, well, what the heck, I may as well order some other stuff that I want, um, to, in order to set up the streaming space for doing some Lego stuff. And hopefully that means that that's something I can get back to sooner rather than later. Uh, I am not spending, how much is it in Australia? I think it's like, actually I don't remember. I think the, that eighty eighty in Australia is like $1,500. I am not spending that much on a franchise that has been ruined by Disney. I would much rather do some other things with Lego. Yep, that's two trees. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... I Honestly, I'd much rather get um, a variety of different Lego Technic sets than get any of the licensed stuff. Um, one of the cool sets that I have bought, which I'm really excited to learn a bit from, is the Grand Piano. That I'm really excited to build and see how it's actually done. Yeah, the grand piano does look amazing. Uh, so I can't wait to put that together, but... I just... I was setting up my shed to be the place where I was going to build all this stuff. And do all the Lego things. Uh, and then... It's kind of gotten to a point where my shed's just... It's just awkward. To set it up to be the space where I do Lego builds is going to massively... Um, impact my use of the shed for anything else and so I'm kind of leaning now toward uh, using my garage instead uh, 
as long as my other half doesn't get upset with me for doing so. Thanks, Rayleigh. Yeah, I'd love to do that sort of stuff. Exactly. Building ships like the Cockroach out of Lego. Uh, building the RX39487 out of Lego. Building those sorts of things. Doing something custom, doing something uniquely me. Um, is what I'd much prefer to do rather than build some giant Star Wars thing. Well, yeah, kind of, Eisen. It is a little bit that I've got too much Lego for the shed. I, I started... I started with the idea that I was going to store all my Lego in the shed with me. But with the amount of space on my computing gear takes up, I didn't really have room to put any of the storage stuff on the walls. And once I mounted it downstairs in the garage, I was like, actually, that's that'd be really convenient to have immediately behind me as I'm doing any builds, because then all of my stuff is right there. So I kind of started thinking maybe I should just do all of them down there. Uh, and if I set up the garage well, it should also be a space that um, Kapak and I could together play tabletop games. Um, one tabletop game I'd really like to play in, which um, I'm hoping to play with Jackson, one of the mod, one of our mods, and one of the bots, um, and potentially Jackson and Capac at the same time is Mobile Frame Zero, which is a Lego tabletop game. Um, so I want to do all that stuff, and I think the garage is just going to be much better set up for it. And so what I've done is I've bought. Um, one of those Elgato cam link things so that my laptop can be the PC that I stream from down there. Because I don't have any hard cabling to it. So I'm hoping that the Wi-Fi signal is going to be stable enough that I'll be able to stream over that. Um, and since, since it'll be in 1080p, it doesn't need to be like super high bitrate, so it should be fine. Um, then after that, I've also got myself some radio lav mics, uh, which should make it a lot easier to move around and do stuff while building. Uh, and then I just need to sort my Lego and actually start setting up the cameras and lights. The thanks to DE for constantly pestering me, uh, I have discovered the kind of awesomeness that is using mobile your old mobile phone and NDI, which is some software that allows you to stream the camera from your phone in actually pretty good quality. So I'm planning on using that as my main cameras. Uh, the Elgato cam link thing will be the main camera, and then the other cameras I can not... I'll, all I need to provide them is USB power. And that's pretty easy. So if I provide them with USB power, I should have done this differently. Um, I can then use those um, my old phones as my alternate cameras. I don't need to like with the GoPro. I had to have an HDMI and USB power, which was a bit of a pain. So I'm I'm really close to being able to set this thing up. Really close. Uh, I'm thinking... I like my a7S II as my main camera. Uh, largely because I don't really want it to be... It's kind of heavy with... It's with nice lenses. So I don't really want it hanging over the top of the table and having to figure out how to mount it. Uh, so the A7S II would stay as the main, like, my face cam, for want of a better term. Um, and then the mobile phones, maybe the GoPro if I have another way of inputting another HDMI source. But probably just the mobile phones, because I've got a... I've got an S... a Galaxy S8 with a cracked screen and, a Galaxy, and an S9 with a cracked screen. Um, but the cameras still work perfectly. 
I haven't used a remote control car with Charlie yet, actually. Now that you ask that. I don't know how she'd react. She tries to eat the lawnmower. So I'm guessing she'd try to eat the car too. Uh, <laughs> I have a suitable lens. The reason, Graz, that I did the pointing it into account into the mirror and then back was because I wanted to use a longer lens because it's more it was more pleasing for bokeh and stuff like that. Oh, that's an interesting question, Laws. I don't know if Capac actually does any detailing with his obsessive use of the pipes. Uh, I genuinely don't know. And that's not far enough. I reckon he just slaps him down. I reckon I do more detail work with the new pipes than he does. That's my bet. I actually probably don't need to do this compact at all, do I? No. I'm just... I'll do just that one. Fine. Ah, uh, yeah, those, the sort of car holders for mobile phones are quite handy for fixing stuff. I've also got a bunch of um, cheapo clamps that I bought off uh, Amazon. That's going to go too far, isn't it? A little bit. A little bit. Let's come back. I don't even know why I'm doing this. I'm not going to do this. Stop it. This is just wasting time. Whoops. He says as he drills off stuff, uh, grinds off stuff he doesn't need to grind off. I had three pistons on here before. Now I can just stack a few more and then we can switch over to large drills and large pistons. I'm just going to make a piston noodle. Bendy Doom Noodle. Fuel low. Oh no. How much ice do I have left? I think I might be on my last bit. Fuel critical. Yep. Oh, not quite, but getting close. Need to be bad. I've gotten so bad. Yeah, soon to be no jetpack stream. Hope I can get this bit, these built before then. Then. Oh yeah, I wonder. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay, I got something fun. Prediction. Start prediction. Oh, it doesn't fit. Will this be a levitating bush? Yes. God bush. No, wait. Uh, yes. Magic bush. 
No. Destroy the living things. Oh. Bad green. All right. Is this bush going to survive? Or will it get deleted? Because I genuinely don't know. Sometimes they get deleted when you mine through them. Sometimes they don't. And we will find out together. <laughs> you liked survival maybe, and survival impossible this season. Join us in survival- Oopsie! Yep. Hover bush. Magical bush, tell us your secrets. I should be standing, not hovering. Though, interestingly, chat's not telling me to stop flying. Is that because they want me to see... want to see me do this without jetpack? Oh yeah, better tools. Can get a better welder. <laughs> we want Splatsy. We want Splatsy. How's the prediction going? 39,000 to 30,000. Pretty close. I mentally told you about 30 minutes ago but forgot to type in chat. Helpful. <laughs> hey, you're a grown man. If you want to fall in a hole, we'll watch. Uh Yay, slightly better welder. No suit survival. I mean, that, that sort of might be something we'll do. Uh, there needs to be more to it than just no suit, though. Because no suit's not really that difficult to deal with. It just slows you down, really. Um, I don't always get it right, but I try to come up with things that will... Uh, force me to do interesting things with my engineering each time I come up with a new series. Um, Survival Impossible, it certainly worked at the start. At this point, I think it's mostly just slowing me down because now that I've got the iron coming down from the asteroid, but having to build the asteroid mining facility to get decent iron supplies was kind of cool. I enjoyed that. Alright. Drill time. No. I think I'll think I've colored it this way because I miss him. There we go. Now it makes more sense. Okay, that's not far enough.
Rimworld is a torso. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I I can barely do Rimworld as a full colony, so I don't think that's going to be a me thing. But yeah, I know that there's a guy who did that. Storage. How are we looking? Really need to find some ice. But I think I should be able to start laying out a bit of a rover base. That I should probably do kind of off the static grid of the current base. Uh, and I should do it using scaffolding so I don't have to use my jetpack too much. I think. Uh, yeah, RWB8. That's kind of where we're going with that concept. Um, I still don't know how much Wasted wants to talk about it. Um, so I'm not saying any more than that. I'm going to get myself in trouble. So the big stupid thing I want to do with this rover is I want to use 5x5 five five wheels. It's dumb because they're worse than 3x3s. Three threes. just want to. I just want to. Uh, 5x5s five are worse because you have less torque. Oh yeah, the data pad did survive on the ground there. Cool. Yay! Have a GPS for the station. Where is it? 12 Ks that way. Okay. Thank you for reminding me about that. Uh, I can use jet. Minimal jetpack use. Minimal jetpack use. Just make the ramps. Should be high enough. I think. Now, do I want to use off road wheels or do I want to use. Yeah, I'll use off roads. Why not? Yeah. It's been so long since I've used these big wheels. Uh, let's give myself five blocks between. I don't know which wheel I just placed there either. Left. Okay, cool. That works. This is the back. That is crooked. So I wasn't looking what I was doing. There we go. <laughs> that should give us some idea of scale. Uh, so the reason 3x3s are better than 5x5s is you get 
more wheels on the ground to provide more torque. There's the same torque to that large wheel as there is to the small 3x3, effectively. Um, so because you can put more 3x3s in the same space, you get more power. So you're better able to move. So this thing is almost certainly going to need to have rocket boosters on it. Once it gets up to size. I know Wasted will judge me on my wheelbase. Wasted judges me on everything. I'm fine with it. Um, <laughs> I accept his judgment. He's you. He's nearly always right as well, which is worse. Um, but I, I accept that his judgment is uh, just a fact of life. Uh, there's no point in setting up any inventory management when all I have is one cargo. I won't. I have no reason to do that. Yeah, that's about the right spacing. So I'm thinking to begin with six wheels, evenly spaced. Because I normally do like four big wheels at the back and then two at the front. I kind of want to... I want to slightly bitter pill this and potentially go for eight wheels all evenly spaced. Um, that's my thinking at the moment. But I'll start. Uh, I'll start with the six until we're mobile. In fact, this may well be comfortably big enough. Maybe I'll just stick with six. I have an idea, though, because for the crane, and I need to have a decent amount of space in the back slash middle for the crane. Um, so that's why I was thinking towards making it long enough for eight. Yeah. Phone, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to auto go to silent when you come into the shed and you go onto the shed Wi-Fi. Rude. <laughs> Hang on, wasted. Here we go. Here we go. I have an idea. Uh... still not going to be a prime number, but it's... It, at least it's going to be odd. There we go. Odd number equals odd handling. Prime number <laughs> equals prime handling. Uh, fine. 
I know a way to make this easily a prime number. There we go. Prime handling. Fuel low. <laughs> oh, and I've just run out of my... I think I'm about to... Oh, is this going to be my last ice? Pretty much. How much do these take? Oh, not that much. Uh, the purpose of the wheels underneath is theoretical shock absorbers, um, but mostly just stupidity. Not much else, <laughs> but that's really the main reason. Yep, zero friction skid plating. Uh, I probably should have had my helmet open then. I keep forgetting to open it after the storms go away. I mean, you do make a good point, Mega Master. In theory, because I've used 5x5s, five I'm going to need thrusters. So I could lift the 5x5s five up and just skid along on the 1x1s one with zero friction and just hovercraft this thing. <laughs> that, that, that could be fun. Stupid and fun. Also, I'm realizing that I should probably have built a battery first, not built uh, the wheels first, but oh well. I'm thinking there's going to be plenty of time for the battery to build, get built and charged. Yeah. Which remains full. Oh yes, we need to... We are still waiting on the levitating bush, I know. I need to clear out some more space of the, in my cargo so that I can actually drill. Otherwise I'm just wasting all that stone that I can reach. Because the bush is still attached to Voxel. Man. Walking up to the top of a platform like this to build giant wheels really takes me back to Escape from Mars. For true wheel dominance, of course, you need to obey the twin prime constant. But as it stands, I haven't worked out how to add 0.660161815 of a wheel. So this is the best we got. Wow, wasted. Uh, <laughs> that was... Mm-hmm. Wasted, how go the um, Atlas test? 
how goes the Atlas test, I should say. Uh. Yeah, I don't... Unless the... Like, I guess mathematically we could work out the number of components in a wheel and try and figure out all of that. Because there's 230. Is there any number of 230 that comes pretty close to that? That we could have just that many components welded up of it? This test went exactly as stress test should. It broke. Fair enough. Okay. might need more power and another refinery to speed my process up here put a small 3x3 three three on the back and call it the remainder <laughs> ah how did I not even get hurt then No, if I channeled my inner, inner capac, I would have been hurt just tripping over on the ramp up here. Uh, I'm going to cancel all this and let's build some power first. Did I hit the wheel? I hit something on the way down, but I... Oh, maybe I did hit the wheel. But still, I... That's still, like, what? Eight meters up? not use my jetpack up because I'm going to run out of fuel. Oop. Thought I was on the ground. I land on the data pad? I don't think so. I think it was a bit away from where I landed. <laughs> that does raise a question though. If you land on a whole bunch of objects, do you take less damage? Hmm. Huh. I, I, I kind of want to test that. But I know I die... I know you get collision damage from being hit by boulders, because when we did the bowling stuff. Uh, and Kapak and Kanajashi managed to murder me a couple of times. 
when I was trying to catch the cobalt boulders. At least the refinery appears to be running more consistently now. What if it was components instead of boulders? Ooh, interesting thought. It could be different. left. Okay, time for drill to move a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. That's better. Now we're going up. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to fill out my water bottle. One sec, guys. Pinball refining does... What? Why am I refining pinball? Okay, now we got the bits. I can just fly up there once. Get these turbines up. Yeah... I've only built one thing with legs that actually moves in a somewhat controlled fashion. I'm not sure I'm ready to attempt that again on my own. I'd probably give that a go in a co-op environment, maybe just for the giggles of us all struggling equally, but on my own I'm not sure how keen I am to struggle that hard. Let's, let's do batteries now. Squeeze two batteries in there, that'll do. This will be more than adequate. Energy low. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing I could if we could work out a way to get some decent pace of locomotion without it being just complete pain, I would potentially consider a wrong way series where we had no thrusters or wheels. Uh, but everything in that regard is incredibly slow, incredibly unstable, or just, yeah, I feel like, I feel like some people would not be able to contribute as much to that scenario because of the challenges that it creates. Um, and that takes away some of the fun.
Like, I think... I think one of the nice things about Wrong Way Down and Wrong Way Up is that everyone can have their thing on the rover. Yeah, Tex, I, w I was... I've, I've talked about the, the Walker rover thing because quite a few people have suggested it in the comments um, where we each controlled one leg. And that's interesting I think for probably about half an hour <laughs> and then I think it'd just get frustrating and so that's why but I, I think it's a concept that could get interesting, it's just not there yet. What if it drilled in a spiral and took 16 hours to build? Oh, wasted. I can feel the pain in the text. Charlie's not barking. She's sleeping, if you guys could hear that. I think, I think if we were doing a walker style wrong way challenge, it'd probably be get over this mountain range, not get to another pole of the planet. Um, cause then it's a bit more achievable, a bit more, um, of a duration that's within the realms of not too stupid <laughs> agreed wasted going a straight line would be a good start I've got a I have a uh, a legged vehicle that does go vaguely in a straight line and it doesn't even use landing gear and it is vaguely shaped like a crocodile Oh, no thrusters, no powered wheels. That could be interesting, because then you could kind of drag yourself along on your belly and drag a sled behind you with all the equipment on it. Yeah, I've shown off my functional Capacodile. I, I, at some point I should finish that thing. Actually get it to look like fully like a crocodile, because I only finished the body. Yeah, I guess the, I guess no powered wheels would be interesting. Certainly allow for some more flexibility in the design challenge. Have we got Hoverbush? I think we need another pass before we can call that definite Hoverbush. Um, punny people in chat, give me a pun for the bush, a pun name. Levitating, hovering, something. yells a bush <laughs> elevated elm floating foliage ledge hedge why are we talking about sledges 
High sticks. <laughs> Drunk trunk. Airbush. Hmm. Foliage previously known as bush. <laughs> uh, <coughs> hover holly. Not so flat bush. Leafitation. Oh god. Alright, let's see if it lives up to any of those. Uh, have we gotten through most of the stone? Still working on it. I'll wait till I've gotten rid of most of that before I do the next pass. Floating flora. Forgot how to tree. Wow. <laughs> Flyage. <coughs> that one works better in text than in speech. Leaf on the wind. Yeah, I kind of like either leaf on the wind or leafitation. Leafitating bush. <laughs> Fairly normal in Minecraft. Yep, accurate. Oh, we're down to the last 12k of stone. Yeah. Uh, wrong way up on water, I completely agree with Wasted. Wrong way up on water is basically thruster override and wait. Um... I I did uh, some work with custom planet, custom water position, that sort of thing, to try and see if I could make wrong way up work with water. Uh, and in my in the process of me testing that, I managed to make my base levitate, as in not float on the water, levitate in the air. And at that point, I decided that um, the water mod was not appropriate for wrong way up. Because I was just like, yeah, nah. <laughs> the I reject your gravity and substitute this bush. Wrong way up with water under ice and acid rain. Constant acid rain at the surface with water. Have to navigate in subs. I, I think navigating in subs could work that could work huh especially with the updated buoyancy mechanics could call it wrong way drown oh dear Um, no, my, my, my levitating base with the water mod was something specific with the water mod because the base was floating on the water initially, and then it decided to go into midair. But that was pre-warfare, so there have been some changes. Um, so it may be better now. I don't know. Uh, I believe we have a levitating bush. The levitation is complete.
Oh no, wasted. Um, you remember, you you may not remember the screenshot I sent you where it was actually like thirty meters up in the air. It was not a wave thing. <laughs> Choose the outcome. Yes, magic bush. Complete prediction. Yes. Uh, actually, I might leave the... Yes, it's the correct one. Um. Hmm. Floating bush. Let's make another refinery. Warheads wouldn't float with the water mod, would they? Not by themselves. Sea mines all over the surface. It is indeed a mighty boosh. Wow, Tex. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to empty out. Let's turn you on again. Nope, not. On then off again immediately. <sighs> Thanks, sensor. Bits. <laughs> What's the difference between splitsy and splatsy? 100 meters a second. Yes, true. Or about 1.9 meters of height. Oh yeah, Imaru, if I if I guarantee if I was doing something with the water mod, especially if I was planning on doing with wasted, the two of us would do something to make it so that you cannot cheese hydrogen power like that. Um I would I'm not sure whether you get rid of hydrogen power altogether or whether you just get rid of the collector. They, yeah, exactly. Completely agree with you, Wasted. It's this, the water issue is the same issue that plagues games like World of Warships. There's only so much interesting you can add to water, since it is basically space with only two degree, two directions of movement. Um, like we may as well be in space where there's asteroids and six degrees of freedom and all that. But yeah, I, I think for using the water mod, you just kill the collector. Make it so you can't build one. Or if there's a way to easily alter the mod to get rid of that function. Just straight up get rid of it. Agreed, Wasted. I reckon you could get rid of the collector and... I be interested doing a test with that to see how long it would take the people we play with to notice it wasn't even there. Ah uh, yeah, Kanajashi's approach was a pretty solid one too, where he um, used the no free energy from hydrogen mod, so you you could use solar panels on a base to you to convert the water into hydrogen that's usable as fuel but you'd have a deficit of energy in the process, so mainly, effectively, the hydrogen tanks became batteries.
Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point, Wasted. Uh, Tex would notice immediately because he'd uh, notice that he wasn't able to cheese the hydrogen power because he's familiar with the mod, but... Kapak has never used the water mod, so I don't know that he'd notice at all. I know you're right there, Tex, but if in in an imaginary world where you didn't know what we were talking about, um, I think Waste is exactly right. You'd know. You'd notice. But in general, like, none of us use collectors. You also use tons of collectors on the deck of your grindy thing. Alright. Now we can get back to making wheels. Um, so Inhuman, the reason you wouldn't tune it to just get a small amount is the moment you tune something to just give a small amount of something, it immediately encourages you in Space Engineers to build a whole lot of those things. That's, and that's not an inter interesting engineering solution. Uh, so one of the things I've deliberately not done in a series like Survival Impossible is I deliberately didn't build tons and tons and tons of wind turbines and tons and tons and tons of solar panels because that would have overcome my minimal wind power and then power wouldn't have been an issue and so I just I had to just stop myself from doing it because the low wind power didn't in itself create an in interesting engineering problem it just meant I had to go bigger. Because there's no cost, once you've built them, of going bigger with things like turbines. Which is unfortunate. Um, if there was some cost we could add associated with building the collectors or building the wind turbines, then you could make it an interesting engineering exercise. Um, yeah, that's that's a fair point too, Drago. Um, with the aero mod or with just weather, because Survival Impossible, I don't have weather enabled. Um, you can... The wind power is not constant or reliable, so then there's other things, but you can still just build so many of them that even when it's low, you still have ample power. Um, just increases the number of how many. That actually did make me have a... Thought. I really need to try and see how time lapses look with weather effects coming in and out. Because that's my main reason for not adding them to the Survival Impossible world. Uh, Laws, I'm not sure if the turret-controlled arm would resolve some of the issues with uh, grinder pits spewing stuff about the place. There's one risk of it, though, which is grinding off your arm that you're controlling. <laughs> Okay. That's good. No. Nah. <laughs> it's so fun in games until someone gets their arm ground off. Indeed. Oh, 
honestly, I'm not sure whether so things like an exponential decrease in efficiency, a, a progressive cost to them, I don't know what would work. Uh, if I thought I had a solution, I might have tried it, but I didn't have a good idea at the time I started. So I impossible, unfortunately. So I just kind of went with something and then decided to just use my own self-control to not do more. Actually, if, if, if Wasted and Tex are in the chat still, I'm curious of their opinion on this one as well. Do you like the hacking mod or the easy NPC takeover style of thing? Or there's a new one. Uh, which I am sub to, which I cannot remember the name of. Which is meant to be a better version of the easy NPC takeover. And from what I've read, is a better version. I think it was by... Scala. Hostile takeover, yeah. Um, I think that one has potential. I'd really like to try it out, but I just haven't had any series where we've been... Taking on real NPCs for a while. Um, but yeah, that the way it's laid out sounds like the right way. Um, yes, Moldark, I do remember the twin stick shooter. Uh, the twin stick shooter was deliberately designed with small grid wheels because it works best at that scale. You can make it bigger, but then the weights and masses get a bit awkward and it doesn't work quite so well. Um, so in theory, something like what you're suggesting where you have to make your progress on your unicycle um, could be done, but it's... It, it kind of becomes a bit of a gag vehicle because the gyro overrides never keep it perfectly stable. Just kind of stable. There's always a bit of drift and a bit of fall to one side or the other. Um, they never stay perfectly upright. Which is unfortunate. Ah, uh, yeah. You you could certainly use the new helm block on the twin stick shooter to turn it into a Segway. Because uh, the twin stick shooter was made before we had any other cockpits. We just had the um, big and the little one, so it's remote controlled instead. Doing. Oh, they're getting up to dirt. Oh, that'll start. That won't overfill. Good. Uh, yeah, Gruz. You definitely can make a technical with a with the helm and turret controller. In some ways, what I'm imagining this turning into is a giant one. Color green is that? Uh, it's that. That's what color green that is. Uh, Drop dead. I haven't played Raft in quite some time. Uh, Nab was telling Capac and I that there's been an update. Or there's a bigger update coming 
that may be enough to entice us to come back, but haven't got any plans on Raft at this stage. Yes, it is a bit more turquoise or teal. Um, just a mechanic. I don't find a lot of fun for myself in uh, Factorio, Satisfactory, um, Dyson Sphere Program. I've, I've played them all and I've had fun for a little while, but not much after that. And with Industrial Overhaul focusing so much on that aspect of the gameplay loop, it's not really for me. Uh, I know a lot of people love it, but it's it's not for me. It's not my style of game. Um, there's there's just something that just doesn't gel for me in playing it. So I I tend so yeah that's why I haven't played it. Other than the first little bit where I was testing it, because I was interested to see how it played and that definitely for me felt like I was playing um why is my welder in my face it felt like I was playing those games And Space Engineers doesn't... Space Engineers conveyor system doesn't really work as a Factorio clone. Because um, it was never meant to be. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't actually achieve what you... It doesn't, I don't feel it works in that way for me. But again, I know a lot of people enjoy it, um, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just not for me. I'd like, I'd like more depth in the way we build stuff in Space Engineers. So having to think about more than just do I have enough power? Yes, no. Uh, but to mod that sort of stuff in would require some pretty hefty scripting and, st and stuff like that. I don't even know if it, the game would still run. Yeah, I agree, Drago. More low-level tech options. Um more stuff to make the exploration gameplay a bit interesting for players like Capac. Um, which is why I've always gone for stuff like the NPC mods, because to me that adds the stuff that I'm looking for to entice Capac to play with me. <laughs> like, quite literally before we ever started uh, making videos, the idea of having that stuff was such a big dream of mine because I was like, if I if I could get these things, then he would play. And I wouldn't have to just play on my own. But because there's no exploration, Kabak gets bored real fast. Um, yeah, TFE, making uh, production facilities heavier, so it's less simple to make them mobile, could alter the gameplay in some ways that might be interesting. I'm not sure it'd do enough, but it would do something. Uh, 
Uh, economy only playthrough. I think once I discovered that it's apparently near impossible to interestingly mod the economy side of the game uh, is where I left that at. The idea of doing an economy only playthrough. Yeah, wait. I I think I think if I don't know why it it makes no sense to me. Keen should have made the economy system so incredibly open to mods because then we would have so many mods adding new missions, adding new content, adding new bases. All of that stuff should have been the simplest part of the game to mod. Because then they wouldn't ever have had to talk about adding NPCs to the game. They would have had it there. The framework is there. It just doesn't work. Um, and if we had that, we'd probably have some incredible options for content that works with the economy stuff. But the, the stuff that's there is quite limited and you probably, from my memory of testing the stuff, would get more interesting interactions out of MES type mods. Uh, Climb was uh, working on that, making an actual cargo container to carry around. I think he got pretty much there. Um, but I don't know what happened to it after that. I know he had a lot of troubles with making it integrated. Um, but also, Climb is usually working on about 10,000 different things, so I never know where any of them are true. <laughs> I feel like that is the prerogative of a, uh, a modder. Work on whatever interests you at the time. Yeah, Gruz, I think Lucas has some ideas on that side of things too. Bypassing Keen's economy stuff and just coming up with your own way to run missions. Um, the challenge though is modding the faction standing is, as I understand it, thoroughly broken. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool, Drago. I'm glad to hear it. Am, am I correct in um, saying that the Warfare 2 update may well open up some new options in creating modding APIs and using the current APIs to do more of this stuff? But I didn't hear anything about um, economy stuff specifically. Yeah, exactly, TFA. It's the lack of granularity in the faction system. Like, why can't we set NPC factions to have different standings with each other? That doesn't make sense. Why is it? Why did they leave it so simple? Yeah. It's a the economy stuff in Space Engineers is a massive missed opportunity for making the game have some incredible content. Because I know, if I thought it was even vaguely approachable for me to make a mission 
for space engineers that plugged into that system. I would have learned how to do it and I would have done everything I could to teach other people how to do it so that we'd have more. The only reason I know how to do anything with um, modular encounters is because I wanted more stuff and I kind of annoyed Lucas until he taught me. Um, I didn't really annoy him. He was actually incredibly generous about it, but that's kind of how it played out. I was, I just really wanted to know and I just kept asking him questions. Um, and he was incredibly kind about it and taught me how to use it. And I think, I hope that my tutorials have opened that up to a few more people. Yeah, TFE, I know you instead because you're awake at the same hour as I am. <laughs> Yeah, true wasted. I imagine it's part of the, the some of it's part of the same system. I'd agree with that, Bino Noir. Um, the modding community of space engineers does rival bigger games like Skyrim in what they've achieved and what they continue to achieve. We have six giant wheels. Now, I need to actually think about this. If I want to have a turret-controlled mining arm, I need something... So I'll need to be able to lift it up, turn it, lower it down, and then I could use pistons to extend the rest of the way. And it could be just that simple. So maybe I'll start with a nice, simple approach like that, and we can see what ways might be able to improve it by adding complexity to it. Um, so I think I'll start with wasting some hydrogen. Let's grab a few of those, grab a few of those, and start placing this thing out. I want I don't want to make the thing too high up. Although, as we've shown in wrong way up, it doesn't hugely matter if they're a bit top heavy. Start with cargo container there. We're going to want advanced rotor on that. And then I think we could probably just do hinge straight away. Ooh. work. Alright, I'm going to weld these up because I'm pretty sure I'm going to use them anyway and low. don't have all scrap so I don't waste anything. So what I'm thinking is um, for folding I can have probably two pistons so attached to that hinge I'll put maybe, uh, how far do I need to go? Maybe three pistons. That's going to be pretty long. Uh, let's do that, because that will prevent some of the falling through the deck. Yeah, I think I need to go three pistons at least because I need to be able to go down by 
four pistons minimum. Uh, this thing's going to be enormous. So what I was thinking was, pistons out, double back with um, a pair of hinges, more pistons for going down into the hole, and then what I can do with the turret controller is control this rotor, this hinge, and if I lift it up to vertical, I can then extend that pair of hinges out until they reach 90 degrees twist my way off to the side and lower it down drilling as I go <laughs> or if it lowers down to when it's basically horizontal I can then extend those pistons down into the ground uh, but mount it off the middle here uh, it's better to have it off the middle because it's going to be heavy and I don't want the thing to tip over Uh, I might be building the Freshmaker's Offspring, kind of. Yes, you could have two controllers um, controlling two sets of joints. Uh, yeah. One turret for deployment, one for operation. Yeah, you can do that. I'm still trying to think of a useful way to have two turret controllers on the one thing. Um, the limitation is you often don't need to have more than one horizontal axis, one azimuth controller. Although... Huh. Maybe there is a way to make this work. Um. Nope. Nope. I need to do that in creative if I'm going to do that. My brain is not working to think it all through ahead of time. Uh, yeah, you should be able to have two people controlling separate parts of the crane or arm. I think I'm just going to go with the idea that I was thinking of originally, because I, my brain. My brain! Also my drills. I think, I think this is going to be an interesting test of some ideas and I kind of want to start simple and see what I can add over time to make this better. Because I haven't had much time to mess around with these concepts. Uh, so this feels like a good opportunity. Yeah, Wasted, it would be nice to have the ability to... Do you, by alt functionality, do you mean the ability to drive at the same time as shooting? Or do you mean something else? Yeah. I... I was kind of hoping that by pointing that out in the the tutorial video I did, someone might be like, oh, oh, we missed that. Whoops. But I'm 
not gonna hold my breath. Mm, the solder only looks good on the ground. Let's put that in there. Okay, so do I want to tuck in under, because that was what I was initial, initially thinking, or should I tuck back over the top? I think over the top's going to be a nicer way to do this. Those two should reach out far enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, they won't. No, they won't. We need to go three. I'm just putting the things in there because they look... I think it could look interesting. Hey, D. <laughs> How's it going, mate? Thanks for the raid. Um, what can I do? Let's... I think I can have that fixed. And then... Thinking advanced rotor. And then hinge. Is this gonna work? No. No, that's not what I want. I do want a hinge in that spot. Hinge. Then it'd be an advanced rotor, then another hinge. So my idea being that'll allow it to go vertical. The second hinge will allow it to flick back. The rotor in the middle will allow it to spin. Is that useful at all? Is that useful? Probably not, actually. Uh, Tex, I will defend you if you get accused of stealing this design. Maybe. <laughs> no, it's... I think it's... The kind of reasonable design. I think. Oh, I'm about to run out of hydrogen. No. 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 Alright. New plan. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Which vehicle should I use to find ice? The big one or the little one? Obviously that one being the big one, the existing one being the little one. I was trying to think of a way to put a rotor into this setup to enable me to have some degree of control to... Um, like adjust the position from there rather than adjusting the, the position from back at the centerpiece. Uh, but I don't think... I don't think there's enough benefit to trying to mangle the design and get that to work. I don't have a GPS for ice. I know where no ice is. I am on Pertum, which means I have to find an oasis. Um. Hmm. I'm trying to 
trying to think through the articulation. I think if I put, if I leave that in there, put another hinge on the end, um, so I can double back, I should, I've got a hinge at the base here, don't I? Yeah, I do. Of course. It's all fine. Yep. As long as these three pistons reach out far enough that I can have an angle up before and still make it out past the wheels or at least past the back of the rover, I should be able to flick the hole extra because I'll probably go four pistons long in the other way. Um, I should be able to flick that down and reach down into the ground to get the ores that are 40 plus meters deep. Because that's really what I need to be able to do. I need to be able to get down to those ores with this mine miner. All right, the little one wins. Let's roll. In a storm. Goodbye, base. I may never see you again. I'm just going to head in a direction and hope I see something. Oop. Look for valleys. I'm sure I'll find a valley when I fall into it. But alright, I'll keep an eye out for valleys. Silicon, nickel, and cobalt. Also, I need to keep an eye out for magnesium just in case I find some. I believe the ore detector needs to be spinning. Uh, no. Because the ore detector is not balanced. It will not be spinning. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oof. <laughs> well, ahem. <clears throat> Save that. Uh, yes. I would I would agree with the once you find cobalt, make a mining ship. Pretty sure that's the order I taught it in. It just makes sense. Uh, I'm guessing the deserts of sand are not where I'm going to find ice. So I should probably get back to the edge of other bit. Although I'm pretty sure maybe these are where hmm. Ice is more important. Having no jetpack while designing this crane will make it take about five times as long. And no people who've played on um, Burton, should I go through the sand or should I stick to this other stuff? Whoa. Oh dear. Oh dear. Gotta love that air shock. When it works in your favor. Wonder if the station sells ice. Or hydrogen. Ooh. Yeah, let's head to the station. If it if it sells hydrogen, then I can I'll buy some. <laughs> I was hoping you were still here when I said that wasted. <laughs> I knew it had I knew it had uh rankle you something. Oh no. Bad tree. 
You're supposed to save me, not kill me. Every time I think about the airshock stuff, it makes me wistful for the days of such complex wheel settings that um, people struggled to understand what they did. But yet gave us so much power and control over what happened. Once you understood them. Oh, jeez. I'm going 86 meters a second. I did not realize that. I mean, it's not going to stop me doing that, but I did not realize. Yep. Oh man, trying to explain damping in that wheels tutorial I did years ago and trying to come up with examples to show how it does different things uh, because no one understood what damping did. I definitely don't have the level of understanding of suspension that you do wasted, but I, I could make wheeled vehicles that worked. Uh, Sinister Owl, there are a couple of Rocket League style arenas made in Space Engineers by people who are much better at making them actually function almost like Rocket League. Uh, Bruce Little Little Lee made one. Um, ooh, Valley. Uh, hmm. And I think... And Drago's got something that's similar-ish, but more first-person control, and you use a rocket launcher to put stuff around. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. That is a problem with traveling. Hello, Assert. That is in the way of me going this way around this hole in the ground. Delightful! I'm guessing this is not the valley that was being talked about about with regard to finding ice at the bottom. These I'm pretty sure are just rock all the way down. I don't have enough jetpack to fly down there and find out. Oh no! Just as I reach, read over, look over to read Texas comments about evil Knieveling my way down the ravine. Oh, I lost my detector. Ow! Uh-oh. What just blew up then? Just armor? Thank you. Weather is clear. Helpful. No, 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 no. No! Grrr! Hmm. I think I might be trapped. <laughs> I 
I think I might be very trapped. Ooh, that's even worse. What have I done? Oh no. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. No, bad, wrong. No, no, no. Oh, this is not going to get well. Oop. 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 I both need softer, yet I, I both need softer suspension to help me um, not bounce off, but I need the hard suspension so that when I hit the bottom again, I don't destroy this thing. Try reversing up. Alright. I'll give that a go. Why not? That is not up. Oh, buddy. What have I done? What have I done? Can't see. Can't see. Okay, reversing up doesn't work. I just flip over. Because my brain, my brain doesn't work. <laughs> no, I'm not going to reload. I'm either going to abandon this and just die down here. Or, um, figure out a way out. doesn't work. What if I try and get along this valley a bit? Yeah, like to here. Yep, that bit doesn't help. Oh no! Ah, oh, dang it. Hmm. Uh, the pa I don't think the power to the wheels is the issue. I think I need to try softening the suspension a little bit. See if I can stay stuck to the ground a little bit longer. Try and get more speed up. Because the issue is I kind of get to a point where I through gyro control, flick myself off the wall. Well, that didn't sound healthy. At some point, one of these is just going to destroy my battery and then I'm done. Alright, let's, let's try Wasted's approach. So, max rear wheel height. They are maxed. Okay, so I see what Waste is trying to do. Trying to increase the pitch. Yeah, see, if my front is always... I could put a gyro on to put the front into the thing, into the wall, but then it'll actually... This thing is so light that it'll actually just push me off the wall. I 
I just need to be able to actually see what's going on with the suspensions to know whether I've done anything meaningful. Because again, this rover is so light. It's really hard to tell. Like, see, that, that was just a little bit of gyro from my mouse that pushed me off the wall there. And I just reached that point where I just kind of can't go further. Uh, I'm just trying... I'd like to try and get this way. Oh, no, bad wrong. <laughs> I'm glad I set my lights back from the front. There goes some more armor. There goes the rotor. Okay, this is where I should be adjusting those front wheels, but I should put the settings on my hotbar, I think. No, no, don't spin around. No. Ugh. Mm. Come on. Ow. It felt like it was getting somewhere and then it didn't. Uh, you're welcome, CH. And this is where I'd need a spider. Because it took a... It did a better job of taking advantage of the janky wheel physics where your center of mass is actually lower than it should be. No! No, why did you do that? Where am I ending up? Oof! Uh, yes, this this rover is almost certainly doomed. I'm just curious if it is possible to do this. Even though I'm getting very lost and disorientated. Nope, nope. Okay, tried something, didn't work. Oh, there goes my battery. <laughs> it's doomed! Doomed. Fuel low. Ow. There we go. Uh, I don't know anything super valuable on me. Can I do something so that it's not just a backspace teleport? Put. Ow. Oh, my 
Ah oui. Yeah, so much for the little rover. I guess it's good we didn't take the big one. Oh dear. Huh. That did not hurt much. Uh, thanks, Scorpion Killer. Uh, I'm not too worried about the stuff I'm carrying. It's only... It's all basic materials. If I come to recover this, it's going to be with something that flies and I'm going to come down here, pick it up, and bring it back. <laughs> oh, yeah, my 7% H2 might be able to get me high enough. Good point. Let's try this first, though. Not quite. Fuel critical. Goodbye, cruel world. Uh, let's production. Clam, clam, clam. Uh, I guess we're not having ice, and I guess I'm stuck with just this very small amount of hydrogen that my suit currently carries. Delightful. So that might be a good point to, <laughs> to wrap up today as I've been streaming now for almost five and a half hours um, I I will probably come back to this within the next week or so and have a bit more of a crack at building this big rover and crane and drill setup because I'm keen to see how it'll turn out uh, I might even or probably do that maybe Wednesday next week, potentially. We'll see. Ah, uh, yes, wasted. I'm weak for going for 5 hours and 20 minutes, not 10 hours and 40 minutes. I know. i got to leave you some space in your day to do your stream yourself. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how wasted does his 10-hour streams every day. I, I don't want to do that myself, because that yeah. I am doing lots of stuff on Wednesday. You're right, Tiffy. <laughs> um, Wasted, are you about to stream something? Um, but yeah, next stream I'll be back for will be... Um... Could be wrong way up, actually. Given... Unless I end up doing something tomorrow. But yeah, otherwise, tomorrow or wrong way up. So there's all that, and plenty more to come. And if Wasted starts his stream, I'll rate him in a second. And I'll see you then. Later, everybody!